are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. <laughs> Michael motherfucking Gonzalez. What's dude. up, dude? Thank you so much Absolutely. for coming out here and hanging out with me. It's so nice to meet you, dude. Yeah, it's great to meet you too, dude. Honestly. Fuck yeah. How you doing? I'm great, dude. Yeah. I'm great. I'm uh I actually just finished lunch at La Barbecue with my girl Allie and my girl Marisa. Dude, it was yeah, I'm full. I'm ready to fucking chill. I'm ready to chat. Yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah, dude. Well, yeah. Thanks for coming on, dude. I uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to have you on here because you're just an interesting character. You're always, <laughs> you know, you're you're always on my TV screen. No, I, when I'm I'm always at home watching Kill Tony. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I got a fucking. This guy seems like a hang. And uh, some of our mutual friends like Yonder and stuff. It's like, dude, he's the nicest guy. You gotta get. Dude, him Yonder. Here, so. When I first met him, dude, he was like, Yo, man, how are you doing? Like, well, you know, it's he awesome. was. Yeah. He looked you in your eye, respectful, and then exactly. we, we like. Also, he's a fucking great musician too. Funny guy, funny comic. It, absolutely funny comic. He's been doing more comedy than he has music recently too. Yeah, he's been saying he's going up a lot. So that's awesome. That's love, awesome. Love I miss him, man. I we, since we've been since we've been at the mothership, I haven't seen him in a minute. Right. Yeah. Is he still working? He's over, working he's out he's the over at Sunset. Oh, he's at Sunset. He's now. at Sunset now. Beautiful. Yeah. He's all over, he's all over town doing yeah. things, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, shout out yonder. Shout out. Love yonder. you, brother, the homie. We love you, man. Um. So, dude, you are such a badass you're a badass <laughs> musician thank you man. i'm like i'm how many bands are you in because i know like you do yeah. i know sometimes you're not on you're not like playing with the band with kill and i pe feel like people are like wondering where you where you go sometimes yeah, you know? yeah 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 um and so i just was curious like what else do you do like besides you know what i mean do yeah you, besides kill tony besides kill tony yeah <clears throat> yeah so i've i uh we'll i play there. with a, i play with a couple different bands here in town okay uh the most consistent ones is with the peterson brothers here and oh, I've seen them actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've if you've seen them, you've probably seen me play with oh, them. Oh shit! Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I so mean, I must have not been. I wasn't paying attention at the time <laughs> or something. I don't know. I'm sorry. As I, dude, I'm also in the back, yeah. so it's all good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't see me, but you can feel me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so Glenn and Alex Peterson, I play with them a ton. A ton. And, and that's for people that don't know, like that's like funky kind of jam. Yeah, yeah, it's soul. like a power trio thing. So yeah. like Alex plays bass, Glenn plays guitar. They both sing. Mm -hmm. I sing a little bit of backgrounds with them. And it's just funk, blues, soul, like everything. Just yes. power. Yes. Yeah, it's awesome, dude. Fuck I love yeah. those dudes. Uh, and then I play a lot with Gina Chavez. It's like a, she's a... Uh, LGBTQ Latin artist, okay. pop artist, pop artist, sick dude. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll check she, it out. yeah, you should. What man. is it, Lena? Gina Chavez. Gina. Yeah, Lena yeah. Chavez. She, uh, she is a Latin Grammy nominee. Oh damn, uh, son. From 2020. Yeah. Damn. Dude, killer. Yeah. That record is called La Que Manda. Okay. Killer record. Okay, I'll look at you played on it. Uh, actually, I didn't. So oh. that that was. Ah oh, man, who was the percussionist that played on that record? So it's a, a dude from New York. I can't remember who it is. But she recorded she recorded it uh, at the end of 2019 early yeah 2019 and then it came out in 2020 okay uh -huh. cool and it's like it's latin music all latin music like what is yeah. that what exactly like what does it sound like uh i guess we i don't know if we could play yeah. it can we play I, it? I, we might get pulled off of youtube you can play know. a little bit or yeah, just put it just... in our just put it on our headphones and we can talk about it yeah yeah play the the the, the title track to the record is called la que manda Lock him on yeah, that. she she boss. She boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell she's yeah. the the <laughs> woman in, the woman in charge. She's, I love it. You know. So give me some, uh, healthier no, 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 dude, you spelled it right. That's great. Now go to now between que and manda. There's a space in there, right there, and then put Gina Chavez at the end. Yeah. Good job, Harrison. Damn, dude, come on, man. You Mexican out here? You know Spanish? <laughs> she. He's there it is. That's it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Just uh, Play yeah. Tricky. Yeah, I guess just uh You can put it in our headphones. Yeah, we can just take it out later. It's fine. I'll just have to remember. Yeah, turn it up on the Bluetooth one. Crank it. It's not coming through. It's not coming through, I don't think. That's okay. Oh, that's alright. I can hear it. Yeah. Might be better this way anyway, because we can just Okay. <laughs> it's like world guy. music. Oh yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. That's what they call that, right? Yeah, world oh, music. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a, I can't remember. What an what ambiguous the, genre, dude. For world sure, world music. And with 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 Gina, I play all sorts of styles of of Latin music. Okay, so does yeah. that keep you like from getting burnt out? Kind of like because like, do you feel like if you were just like yeah. in? Because like, dude, I'm I'm honestly like 
I, I the only thing I've ever done musically is play metal. Like I'm in a, really? I'm in a metal band. Yeah, no, I yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like the, that's the only thing I've ever done. I mean, when I was growing up, like we did, I went through the motions. Like I did band in school and played yeah. trumpet for like a minute, but that was just so I could get to drums because like you had. Wait, to you're be, a drummer too? I started playing drums. That's yeah, fun. I would not call myself a drummer. <laughs> okay. At, at this point, you know what I mean? Because I feel like you're only a drummer as long as you're fucking chopping it every day. I don't think that's true, man. I mean, if I could still get on and like yeah. do a little thing, but like you know you. You start to suck so bad. It's not riding a bike, you know. What well, I mean? no, that 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 definitely is true. Yeah. Like you have, if if you stop playing drums for a long time, and that that includes percussion, that includes all of it. If you stop for a long time, like it, you you definitely lose it. Yeah, like yeah. if I if I probably practiced hard every day and got like a nice kit and practiced yeah, yeah, yeah. every day for like six months or a year, you think you get back? Maybe I could get something Let's back. I, maybe I could. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but if I ever went on Kill Tony, I would not say that. I'm like, God, I play drums. I would not. I'm not trying to go for the fucking drum off with you, bro. No chance. No Dude, that, chance at I, all. I love. I love that. Such that, an like, ego boost. It, no, it's not even just an ego boost. <laughs> it's it's, just, it's fun. just fun. It's yeah. fun. It's fun. Exactly. And even that, like, the the people who come up, you know, most of the time they they haven't played drums in a long time. They say it because they've done it. They grew up playing drums or anything like that. Right. But they all have been really cool. Even if yeah. they, you know, that's not why they're up there. They're up sure. there to be a, uh, you know, a comedian yeah, yeah. or try it out. And they say that, and we have a good time, man. Yeah. I, I I haven't met no him. beef, no beef, no, yeah. it never been. It's yeah. it's it's fun. It's all fun. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. People ask me, he's like, dude, you, you could you really lose your job? I was like, yeah, I could really <laughs> yeah, lose my bro. job, yeah. man. Yeah. I practice every day so that that doesn't happen. You're like, my shit is always on the line, yeah. son. Yeah, it al always is. Dude. <laughs> I'm but always that's, ready to go. That's I mean, I'm sure Hans feels the same way. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're doing all that with them, too. Exactly. So, so I'm sorry, back to like playing different kinds of music. So does that, yeah. that keeps you fresh, I imagine, and just kind of bouncing because you're doing all this kind of different. You're playing, getting to play all kinds of different stuff. Like, yeah, and I like that, man. I, I studied with the dude named Wayne Salzman III in college, and that's what he, he told me that. Is you're going to be a professional musician, man. you got to be able to play everything. Everything. So that's that's the kind of way, that's how I based my entire career. I've yeah. played everything from you know rock and roll with Emily Wolf to Magna Carta, a lot of hip hop music here in mm -hmm. town, to Gina, which you just heard right now. Right. I play percussion too, so I like I play congas, timbales, like all the stuff. So I can play with the salsa band. I do. Jesus. I I try to play as many different styles of music and learn everything about those styles yeah. so and, and funny enough dude it like music is a language so yeah. if i learn something in a salsa thing and i take rhythms from there i can add it into other shit that i'm playing yeah and a have that make sense a little extra seasoning yeah, dude. on, on Absolutely. the conventional whatever rock beat or whatever yeah. most definitely the, honestly the more you know the 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 better the i mean the more you have to choose from when you're in a mu musical situation, right? Yeah, you slip into the bossa nova real quick. You could lay that sna lay that stick across the snare. Drum. <laughs> you fucking you know could, dude. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. I hear so you. yeah, it, it it keeps it fresh. But you you asked about the burnout thing. It's like I don't I don't I started so late too, man. I started playing drum set when I was 18. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I, I was like, gonna ask about that. My dad my dad was like, hey man, you you know you're practicing a lot. You I don't want you to get burned out on this shit. Yeah. Because there was there was a couple summers in college where I would come back home and I'd work at my grandfather's office during the day and I'd practice at night. Like, throughout. Yeah. Like, it was a place where you could play 24 hours. Kind of well, I, <laughs> I wish. They, oh, I played okay. in the garage and my yeah. parents were asleep inside and you can hear the drums all the way on the other side of the house. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. But it, it was just... I. I loved it so much. I, I still do, man. Yeah. I I I love That's getting awesome. in in the shed and like practicing and this. Kobe, I'm I, I took this from Kobe though. You got to be in love with the journey instead yeah. of the you know the destination. Hundred percent. Yeah. Dude. So I've I I, been, I told been, him yeah. I I don't I don't think I'd ever get burned out. Yeah. I, I can't. I, yeah. This is you do too much different shit. I I like probably it. Probably why. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe and you like you like the work. You I like, do. You I like the hard work. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love the 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 practice aspect of getting in a shed, like making a goal, figure out what I don't know, practice that and practice that and practice that until it finally clicks. So when you're practicing, like uh -huh. because you guys play like any song like quick. Like, yeah. Like and so that was a big thing I want to talk about. Like mm -hmm. first of all, how the fuck do you guys do that? That's and a, then and then and is and then how do you like practice for that? Because you can't just like practice what every Rage Against the Machine song and then <laughs> every fucking classic R and B soul song and then every you yeah. know what I mean? Like that's that would be so it's like do you guys just generally know like the is it because you guys know the roots of like you know each song or like I don't know how does that how do how do you guys just start playing something? It's funny now I got to give a shout out. 
out to John and, and Matt on those. John Dees. So John Dees and, and Matt Muelling. Those fools know so much music. And so does Dee. Okay. Like every, here's the thing. Everybody on that stage just knows uh, their encyclopedias of music, right? Yeah. So that's that's how we're able to ebb and flow through any any song. Awesome. And Tony will be like, do you know that song? And then Matt will start playing or Dee's will start playing right. it. And, we, uh, you know, we've all been playing together, fuck, since... 2016 2017 Damn. yeah so we've all been friends for a long time yeah. i met john when i was still in college i didn't graduate until 2015 i think i may have met him my senior year okay yeah there he, john john hosts a bunch of jams all the time like back then so we would all go and play and and it was that same type of thing where we so at the beginning of the shows of of kill tony shows which is actually it's not on youtube should you be it <laughs> it's good i mean i've seen i've you been, been i've been yeah. to plenty of them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's awesome we we get up there and we vibe with each other somebody starts a musical phrase or you know what they're feeling and everybody kind of trickles in and we set a groove we set a vibe we set a mood and then we can take it from there you know matt will matt will md and be like hey we're gonna do this we're gonna go to you know go to the four like if we're playing the funk thing He'll he'll lead us through the whole thing, and we all have been playing music long enough, and we've all have our ears open to go. All right, cool. This is what the vibe is supposed right. to be right here, and then it'll bring it down. And we're like we're creating on the spot, and we've been so doing sick. that for a long time. And it's easy when you know you've been playing with them, so right. like you you have you have that like almost telepathic knowledge of, yeah, of you guys playing are, with each other. You guys other. are just on a wavelength, and it's you can only get to through you know. Yeah. playing just a million a million hours of 10,000 hours with each other. Yeah. That's kind of how we are too like on stage, you know, like Yeah, we, you like we my guys all live in Portland still. And really? Nobody yeah, lives here? Just me. Yeah, oh, I just shit. moved I just moved here like a year ago. So, we'll, you know, we'll meet up, practice a couple times. Yeah. I I'll practice like leading up to a tour or something. I'll yeah. practice like they'll send me the backing track and the click track and everything. Yeah. And uh, the, and the guitars are in there, so I'll just like scream to that, uh -huh. and then uh, and then we'll meet up and run it like two three times, yeah. and then like after the third show on tour, it's like whatever. We've been playing music for ten years together. You know Dude, what I mean? That's just, fucking just, wild. And like our bass player and drummer are brothers. Love it. You know the rhythm yeah. section's tight. You know you what know I mean? they, they, yeah, yeah. they've <laughs> they been grew up they've together. been playing since little kids. You yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah yeah yeah. And then uh, and then Blaine has been best. Our guitarist has been best friends with them. Yeah. John, John, our newest guy, came on in 2015. So that's, what does that, he play? What he plays you? guitar too. Okay, so, cool. Uh, he hasn't been touring with us recently, so it's just been our like ma our original nice OG, OG guitarist. But um, question but for yeah. you: for wh when you're about to go on tour, what's the process like of of re putting that music together? So they send you all the tracks, and then you fly to Portland, and then yeah. you you have like and like then we run, rehearsals. We have for, like two, we we'll rehearse three four times maybe. I love before it. we go like yeah. two days. I'll get home like a day and a half early. Yeah, and we'll just run it a couple times because I don't want to blow my voice out either. Oh, in so practice. you're 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 singing? I do the it. screaming shit. Yeah, <clears throat> you know That's the dope. fucking yeah, yeah yeah yeah. But like I want another thing I want to talk to you about is like just playing all this different music and like mm -hmm. I recently have been on like a musical like journey like okay. with what i'm listening to so yeah. I, went, I go through weird phases with music music almost is like a distraction for uh -huh. me from itself in a weird way yeah I know that sounds kind of weird but like i'll go down like a country lane mm -hmm. and then i'll just be listening to that country shit. you know what i mean yeah, and, it, and it's like it's easy for me to just get cracked out on that like one genre yeah. and then it's like wait no, no no i gotta go back and listen to all the you know this stuff that i haven't been listening to yeah. and like uh and it's it's cool. Recently, I've just been going back to like you know Incubus and like old <laughs> like old rock shit, like Soundgarden and yeah, Alice in Chains. Because I'm trying to add like some clean shit into our, the the music for the first time, you know, yeah. some singing, the actual singing stuff. And I've been singing a lot recently. Yeah. And so I want to like go. I would I want to figure out how to f find some dudes that like do what you guys do someday, just so I could jam. I want to like go to a jam and like sing some. I've been singing old songs like the Commodores and the fucking yeah, you know, like, like old soul shit. Old soul shit has yeah. been like my number one my number one jam right now i fucking Just listening it. to like you know fucking ain't no love in the, in the heart, heart of the city, city. that's I the shit bro yeah I listen to that like on my way to do mics and stuff. Yeah, like, I'm just like it's just like it's such a lurky beat. You know, it gets like you it's in like the fucking it's mood, like you're man. lurking in the city. You know what yeah. I mean? That fucking yeah. song slaps, dude. <laughs> and like the feeling of that music is so sick. Yeah, you know dude. what I mean? Like you, there's fucking so much emotion, and who knows what was going on during that time? You yeah. can probably look it up it in the '60s or something. You know, whenever that shit came out. Absolutely. But yeah, I want to do some like it, I'm just really. Uh, inspired by like the stuff you guys do because it's just Thanks, like yeah. it's so tight and cohesive but it's like not rehearsed it's 
it's it's kind of an anomaly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it, and going back to the fact that like we we're all homies off the stage, so that yeah. chemistry starts important off the stage. Exactly. We're all friends. You know, we hang out. We go to each other's like houses. I've I, the amount of times I've gone over to John's place or Matt's place. Like, yeah. it's we're we're just friends. You know. That's super important. So that it, it's yep. specifically doing something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. see it all the time with metal bands and shit too, bro, where it's like these guys at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they don't even like each other. Or they don't know that they don't like each other yet until they're in Kansas. Ah, in that's the, tough. Uh, you know, and then they fucking yeah. get in a fight. And it's like, I never fuck liked you. And it's like, it sucks because it's like that breaks up a lot of bands and causes a lot of problems for people. You know what I mean? Yeah. When they're just kind of like, let's get this thing together so we can like, I don't know, like look cool or like work toward being popular or be famous uh, or what. I don't know what, I don't know. You know what I mean? But yeah. like we, it's seems like so, like a, like less bands maybe are getting started i don't know this is just a fucking a, a statement but maybe less yeah. bands are a question maybe less bands are getting started for, like from just homies playing together like maybe yeah. there's a lot of bands that are like you know we, i want to go be in a band and i want to go do what these guys are doing versus mm -hmm. just like dudes i mean that's kind of how it all starts for everybody yeah but, i think so yeah but then if you can have it with your homies instead of like just recruiting strangers that you don't know you know what i mean i mean you can yeah. become friends with people that's that's not impossible but right. it's like like you said, that chemistry is just so important. It really is. It really is. Yeah, yeah and I've been, I've also been in a couple of situations where the chemistry wasn't there, yeah. and you feel it. You feel it on stage, and at at that point, it just feels like work. It feels like a job. Yeah. And that's not what I. That's not how I want to play music. Is that like when you do fill in work, or like have you done have you done fill in work? I've done fill in work. I, I as a matter of fact, I get session called work, whatever they call. I so session work is like you get called to do a studio session. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Fill like sub work is uh, a band will call or like I have a lot of homies that uh, they go on tour or they're going to studio sessions and they need a fill in drummer. Yeah. So I actually just did that with a band called Money Chicha. It's a cumbia band here in town. Okay. Yeah. So uh, remind me what cumbia is again. The cumbia you? is a style of Latin music. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, specifically, this this band is is chicha cumbia, which is a, a another sub genre of cumbia. Uh, but my my mentor is like a guy who I a, a really good friend of mine, John Spies. He's a drummer and percussionist and producer and does everything here in town. He was out at a studio in El Paso and uh, he asked me to cover for him for this band. And I had done I had done some work with them before. Funny enough, like I learned the entire set for a show last year, a little over a year ago. That show never happened. Uh, we rehearsed. The fucking rehearsal was great. So they you kind of had it in the distant past, like yeah. in the memory. Well, you, funny enough, like so, I uh, because I do so much sub work, I have I I make charts and I I have this whole thing that I don't have to memorize it. If I'm playing with a bunch of different bands at the same time, it's hard for me to memorize like through composed music, specifically yeah, okay. like this. Yeah. There's a lot of like if you don't listen to this type of music all the time, there's a lot of roadmap traps that you can fall into. Like a lot of two imagine. four bars or like a a five eight bar here and there and you're like what the fuck did the whole thing flipped right you know yeah so I chart everything out and I read it down and so you can actually like read music and do the whole thing y yeah yeah okay. actually Damn. but the, the way I do my charts is a little bit different it's gonna it's, we're getting to like the inside baseball shit here but <laughs> yeah. it's uh it's all right let yeah. them have it. a lot of music people listen to this I love so it so they'll, they'll yeah uh, I mean. I have a small amount of people listening to this right now because it's a new podcast, okay. but a Fuck lot of it. them are a big percentage are musicians are like musician people. Yeah, so, great. Yeah. So I I I I have a uh, like a shorthand way of doing my own charts. It's not like a jazz band chart where you see bars and shit. Okay. It's uh, I'll give you an example. I know very little about this. Like or I, That's I mean, okay. I, I learned how to read music back in the day, but then it just, funny enough, <laughs> it's not really music. It's like I have. Depending on the type of music that I'm playing, it's if it's like a guitar pop song, tabs or something, not even, oh, okay. not even. So it's it's uh, it's a roadmap essentially. So if I'm playing like a pop song, I got intro, verse one, mm -hmm. pre, hook, and most of the time, if in the pop song, that will come back around, verse, pre-chorus, hook, bridge, mm -hmm. and then like double chorus out to the outro, right? So I have all that right. there, and then I have the number of bars that are that are in each of those sections. And sometimes the the verse will have, I'm I'm on a cross stick in the first verse, so I'll write cross stick and I'll put the I'll, I'll put a bar, writing out the rhythms. Okay. Right. So yeah. that's this, and then sometimes like if uh, going into the pre section, it's an open hi hat, 
going into the hook, it's a ride cymbal. Do you do that for every type of music you play, or is it just the, with this one, basically, it's, because it's com complicated and a little different? No, it's it's when I have to learn music really quickly. Yeah. And oh, I've, I if it. I have to learn... So, let's say uh, I got called to play with Charlie Crockett in 2021. I had to learn Whoa. 30 songs for that tour. It's five shows. I had to learn a shit ton of music. It's And granted, it's... Old country shit. It's old country shows. shit, but it's also... If you don't listen to the music, you're going to get fucked. Yeah. Because it, it's not just like... It's a lot of shuffle shit, and there's a lot of like two, four bars. Because a, a, a lot of the country stuff is phrasing based off vocals, right? Right. So it's not just 16 bars. It's not like a rap song where it's mm. like you give the rapper 16 bars and then it goes back around. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's a lot of... If you didn't listen to the stuff, and specifically the live versions, to prepare for that... He, um, the my buddy who called me got me tickets to uh uh shout out Clellan High. He's another drummer in town. He actually is uh does the books and CPA stuff for Charlie. He was a friend of mine, uh, and he called me and was like, Yo, Charlie needs a drummer. Can you do it? And I was like, Fuck yeah, absolutely. This is great. Yeah. I had I hadn't listened to too much of the stuff at the time. He's so, so dope. Dude, Charlie's great. He's that so whole dope. camp is amazing, man. Yeah. The whole camp he's is He's a cool awesome. guy too. Yeah, he's nice. fucking great, yeah. dude. His music is great as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So he called me and he was like, Hey, go check out the live show in San Antonio. I'll get you tickets. Go. So I went. I I videotaped or like I iPhone recorded the entire set. The entire set. The only thing that I didn't have was like the the intro in like the first two or three Actually, I think it was like the first four songs. Uh, I record from the fourth or fifth song after that, I recorded the entire set. When I went home that night, I charted every single song on that one. Road mapped it out. Road mapped it out. Damn. R did like did specific specific hits or, you know, whatever the arrangement was that uh, Mayo, his name's Mar Mario Valdez. Mayo is the drummer. Uh, every hit or everything that he played on that, I tried to do as much as possible. So that way they don't have to worry about me or they don't have to worry about the drummer. So yeah. all they can do is just play the song, act like Mayo's there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that. And, uh, since I didn't get the first couple ones, I actually found some YouTube videos of that same show, like a couple months before. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to take a risk on this cause I don't know what was played before that. So I'll just take the first four songs from that charted all of that out it ended up being the same exact intro so i got lucky on that nice but i had the whole show down on my ipad read it through oh you do it all on your ipad yeah oh, yeah shit. yeah i nice. i well actually with those i wrote out charts and then took pictures and then put it on a on Foursquare. do you know what Foursquare is i don't think is it it's like a, a it's a music software oh, okay. uh, no, I don't like it's it like is. an app where you can make charts and do other okay. like i had it in a set list i just Press the press the screen and goes to the next one. Press the screen goes to the next. Oh, one. that's cool. Yeah, so it's kind of a virtual like book, so you don't have to like yeah. read sheet. One hundred percent. It's like one hundred percent. So I'm not paper fucking anymore. Yeah. right. Exactly. And I'll try to. <laughs> and I don't want to, <laughs> dude. It's so it, and specifically because I'm using both hands at the same yeah. time. If I needed to do this, it's just one. But instead of like trying to flip a switch or like flip the page or the fucking thing falls or i i don't want to have a music stand on stage either no so i had an ipad underneath my hi-hat so if oh like with a, one of those little arm yes, things dude. that like like yeah. a gorilla pod type exactly. thing nice that's exactly what i had so it was just boop next song on top boop, next it, song bro. yeah it was it, dude that that was like that was like the first time i felt like oh shit i can i can do this yeah you know absolutely so i got through that whole thing no rehearsal the first no the, rehearsal the, the, that no threw rehearsal. your ass in there damn yeah zero rehearsals the first the the only re like little rehearsal we had was sound check. Yeah. So we get in there. I'm like nervous because all the guys like I'm I'm young I'm the young I was the youngest one in that crew probably like eight to ten years. How old were you? Uh, 2021. 20, so I'm 30 right now. Okay. So that's two years ago. Probably 28. 28. 28. Okay. And all the guys were like in their mid to late 30s. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, well, you know, none of these guys know who I am. Yeah, I was I was hired by you know their CPA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, these ain't Kill Tony fans. N no, <laughs> no, absolutely. These are yeah. country guys. These are country yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's legit shit, dude. We're oh, playing big rooms. Yeah. Oh, big yeah. rooms. Yeah. yeah. So He's I was. Huge. Like, yeah. Well, it's funny enough. Uh, on that tour, the first show that we played, he had just got signed to CEA. Uh, CAA. Okay. On that on that first show that I played. What is that? CAA is a uh, big country. No, no, it's a a, a management company. Oh, I think okay. it's a, or Continental, an agency, Continental a management agency. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
I'm not. I'm CAA or C. One no, it's big definitely talent. CAA. Yeah, talent. it's a talent agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Booking so, agent. so that guy was there at the show, oh, shit. and he came on the hung out with us on the bus Being afterwards. Crushed. Dude, it was it was it was really cool. So going back to going back to the yeah. the sound check, we played a couple songs, and I'm kind of nervous. We did the first one, great. Second one, great. The third song, I started off the way the drum like the way Mayo usually starts it. And we start playing, and and Charlie goes, whoa, 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 too fast, too fast. And it was, I was like, kind of nervous because he wasn't looking at me; he was looking at the MD. And I'm the one starting the, MD, sorry. the music director. Okay, okay. So he turns around, look at the MD. No, 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 too fast, too fast. So I was like, okay, fuck. All right, let me do it again. Do it again. Start it off. Did it again. Within the first couple bars, no, 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 too fast, too fast. And I was like, whoa, fuck, this. this Am I fucked? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. And then we finally get through it. I slowed it down just a little bit more. I was like, all right, keep your composure. This is, you know, we're, this happens. So I got to act like I've been here before. Do it again. Fine. Cool. We run third, through the next Third one. time's a charm. On that. On that. Absolutely. So that was cool. Like, that was kind of like the first was like, fuck, fuck, yeah. fuck. I, you know, get, get your fucking head in the game. Like, right. this is what you need to do. Listen to what he's saying. Slow it down. Do it. Yeah. And okay. then you're battling with your nerves too, well, that's which the, are gonna add to like you messing the tempo up. Yeah, right? and they like I, I lear- I just learned this stuff a week ago, right? Yeah. So I'm, but I'm also in the drum chair, which is the most important guy in that band because he starts everything. Yeah, he, it's always but do well, but but like I count the band off. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like once it starts, it's like they don't I, have I, like they're not they're not on like any old school. Shit. Damn. Old school. They don't have ears. No they clicks. They have. they no. No, it's not the vibe You're for the that. Click, son. I'm the yeah, You're the, the click, like son. Ringo, like Ringo, like Ringo. I'm the fucking click. I'm the fucking I'm the click. Fucking click. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so that crazy. was like that was pretty nerve wracking, and we 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 uh, we got through it, and it was cool. And then we the the I guess the last song of of the night. It's just uh, fuck. What was it? What was it called? I can't remember. I'll 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 give you the I'll give you the name of the song, but it's a it's like this big kind of like train beat thing, but it has a lot of hits and it has a lot of solos and in the solo like the drummer goes with with uh what Nate's playing on the on the pedal steel and then what the what the piano's playing in his solo and there's hits here, hits here. And I fucking nailed every cuz I wrote it out. I wrote yeah. out all the rhythms, you I wrote out roadmap. everything. I did. And I fucking nailed it and I was getting like the guys were were very uh had me at arm's length at the beginning because right. I'm new. They yeah. don't. I'm they're fucking like, young kid. Like who am I? Right. They're like ready to get rid of this kid if we have to and put, call somebody else. Yeah. They're, don't granted. They were all cool with me, yeah. but they was like, hey, you know, can this kid play? Right. So after I played that one and nailed everything, all of them kept like looking back, giving me side eyes with a smile and be like, oh, okay. this motherfucker did his homework. Yeah. After we did that, the sound check was over. We all walked back down and they all were like, bro, thank you so much for doing your homework, for real. <sighs> And that was like the biggest fucking like ah yeah okay cool now 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 I'm like initiated into the group right then we had amazing shows the entire time and it was fucking awesome and I remember at the end of the Chicago show because we did a Midwest run we did five shows at the end of the Chicago show at the uh fuck what man I forget all I have it all written down but like pulling it off the top of my head there's a theater in Chicago that we played after that we finished the whole show I walk off. And Charlie, Charlie looks at me. He gave me a hug and he goes, "Bro, n- nobody could have done what you did, man. I'm glad we chose Fuck. you and you fucking makes me want to cry, dude. Dude, it was I. I wrote it and I wrote it in my my music journal. Yeah. And I was like, Yo, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. Fuck yeah. And it it fucking felt good. It's like that hard work pays this. off, baby. One hundred percent. That hard work pays off. One hundred percent. And I don't. I honestly, when you get when you get called to like. Do any gigs If you're getting called To come and fill in For somebody Do the fucking Even homework. your own fucking gig Well even your own gigs you got, <laughs> I mean be prepared Practice man. your shit Preparation is the one thing That you can control Yeah And I'm I'm actually surprised That not not More people do that Right It's kind of crazy And I mean Yeah it's like Just It's People don't take it As seriously as other people Right It's just like yeah. anything else Really You know what For I mean For sure Like you could Like you see all those comics Go up at Kill Tony That are like <laughs> Either just, they, You know they I don't know They not taking it like they don't care or they're just like a you know person that wanted to try it or which, fans. Is, which is cool or fans yeah, yeah which is cool it's all cool yeah but it's just like you see the difference you 100 with somebody agree. who like is going hitting mics all the time or yeah you know what i mean you like, can tell with you drums, can tell right away it's even more so because if you hear a drummer that's out of time that'll ruin that'll that'll fuck up the whole well situation. you're only as good as your drummer dude yeah 
your band is only as good as the drummer. 100%. It is what it is. I love you, Garrett. That's why. Yeah, our what's up, Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. We got a shed sometime. Yeah. Oh, let's funny go. enough, does he plays double pedal, right? It's a, it's oh, a metal yeah. band. So yeah. I just got a double pedal a couple months ago. Nice. And I've been like, He's gonna come out. He's gonna come out here soon. Is he really? And uh, hang out with me, do the podcast. And I work, fucking write love some it. music and shit. So great. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll we'll have to link. It, yeah, link, man. Out. I've I've got a drum studio on the east side, dude. Come and fucking show me your double pedal ways, my dude. Let, oh, he will teach you, brother. Yeah, no, he that's will teach you the ways. I he's love been, it. I found them all when they were like, you know, I mean, I always knew them because we lived in the same neighborhood. But yeah. they like, they were like, yeah, come over. We've been like writing music or whatever. We started hanging out like in class, you know, in school or whatever. So y'all like grew up and went we to grew fucking up, high we school. We grew up together. together. Yeah, my my guitarist girl uh, sister was my like first little childhood girlfriend for a week in seventh grade. No, he shit. was he was like the annoying little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? And uh, and so he must have been like, I was like six when I met his family. So he wow. must have been super. He's three, four years younger than me. So damn. So he's like, I, I knew wasn't even he was like a little, yet. a little. Oh, uh, may, yeah, maybe not. Uh, no, he wouldn't have been. Holy yeah, shit! Because I met his sister in first grade. Even that's worse. awesome. Two, three years, maybe two, three years older. But yeah, anyway, we've all. That's why, like we were saying, you've been. We're home. We're like family. You know that's what I mean? Best, man. Which I feel like it's like, you know, there's a lot of bands out there that are way better than us. But it's like the, our edge is like at the end of the day, we're homie. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like we have that connection absolutely. And it's and I think that shit is so important when you're. Playing, it's the most like, important. Playing live music, dude. It's the most important. It's the most important, man. We just went on our like biggest tour uh, this year with like a big band plucked us to go on tour. It was like, whoa. So you opened up for this? How yeah. long was the run? It was uh, almost a whole month. Fucking it was love like it. we went across the U.S. like twice and then went to Canada. And do you know who Born of Osiris is? Like a metal band? I don't. I, don't I don't think so. Yeah, it's uh, but it's in the genre. It was like a big deal. We were so it. honored to go out with those guys. And yeah, they treated us cool and like we're homies. With that's us. the and that's. Like, it was like a it was like a one time when you meet your heroes type shit where they're yeah. not they're not assholes. You know what I mean? And that's it was the best, like, dude. Especially when they make it comfortable for you. Yeah. and you get to hang with them and shit. Like yeah, and it was like, dude, like when we before we were ever a band, we used to we had a we grew up in like a pretty bougie suburb mm -hmm. of Portland. And uh, we had a guitar program, which is pretty cool. And they yeah. like had drum sets and guitars in like this practice room. So yeah. they would go in on their lunch break and like um, and play like uh, metal songs, right? Like yeah, all yeah, of our yeah. favorite like death metal songs and shit. And so one of the songs is like a Born of Osiris song that was like really popular at the time, still is. And uh, I would like skip my classes and um because i was like a fucking you know degenerate. <laughs> i would skip class if i knew they were going to be in there um, and go and hang and with go them. hang with them I and uh them. i got in trouble one time for screaming one of their songs and got he was like get out of here you can't scream in the microphones like go back to class you shouldn't be here he didn't like me anyway because i was a shitty drummer you know what i mean oh, in, the, okay. in the guitar program so there yeah. was a little bit of beef you know with with mr king you know is his name that's fucking wild. and uh he was cool he's he's fine but uh <laughs> it was me it was me you yeah, know, yeah in yeah, retrospect yeah. it was me i yeah. was i was out of line okay, okay. but right. uh but uh but yeah it wasn't very punk rock of mr king you know what i mean <laughs> and but, funny enough you scream in a mic for a living now so it's well not for a living i don't make a living off of that shit oh okay, okay. but not yet i'm not i'm not i'm not on your level bro i, I want to talk about that in a minute too yeah. but 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 yeah anyway it was cool to like get kicked out of get kicked out of uh, the practice room that's and fucking then, like punk 10 rock, years dude. later they took us on tour there you go and it was see? like bro is this a movie you know what i mean does like, he remember that no, I don't know. I don't oh. ever talk to that guy. But it was okay. just like it was cool for us, you know. Yeah, what I mean, because no, it was absolutely part of the foundation of like you know, it was a it was a big victory for us. I fucking you know what love I mean? it. So hopefully there'll be more of those. But either way, we're just like having fun, and you know, we kind of I think over time too with music. And I don't know if you ran into this. Uh -huh. Have you been in bands and stuff that are not the like like the Kill Tony band where you guys make like your own original thing, like where it was your band you were trying to make make it with, like because Kill Tony band doesn't make original music. Do well, you? oh. Yeah. Oh, we're we, we dude. Funny enough, last year we were working. We're we we've got some tracks ready to go. Wow. Yeah, and we're we're trying to get into the studio. We're trying Let's to do some go. stuff, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drop the album, bro. Yeah, man. Drop yeah, we're, the mix. We're trying. We're trying. Yeah, we're, we that want. Would we want to. So sick. Yeah, we want to put a record together, and we funny like we have, uh, Kino, who's the sound guy at at the mothership. He's got recordings of every performance that we've had wow so you guys could just go back through your jams and be like that's a song let's, yeah let's let's, let's learn that let, again absolutely absolutely Give it, slap a and name then, on it well n put it out as a live record or yeah. 
go back and like put a studio thing together. Yeah, that like that's how so we dope. that's how we were doing last year when we when we put some songs together. You guys need to because you're you're such a talented group of musicians. Thanks, that's man. Like you're Thank better. You. You're better than you're more than just the band on Kill Time. You know what wow. I mean? Thanks, man. Yeah, and I mean Thanks. so that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you know that's at the bottom of my list of questions. We can talk yeah. about that, but it's like you know there's yeah whatever you want to talk but, about, man. But yeah. yeah, I'm I mean I'm more curious. Like I think a lot of people would like to know uh -huh. like how do you go from like doing music as like kind of a secondary hobby thing if it makes money cool it probably won't mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that kind of, that's the mindset right okay. it, like that's most people i think are like let's yeah. you know i gotta work my full-time job and then like we'll pack up and go on little trips on the weekends yeah. and like and it doesn't work out for a lot of people you know what i mean most, like most, your boy gets married and he's like man i'm getting a promotion like yeah. i gotta get after this money and like i can't fucking play bass for you guys anymore you yeah, know what i mean tough, like I, I gotta give up the childhood dream of like doing this yeah. and so it's like i guess instead of like how do you do it how tell us how to do it michael like yeah. what was what's the how did that happen for you and when yeah. were, when were you like i'm like holy shit i don't have to work anymore like like i don't yeah. have to i don't have to and and that's not to say that you don't do a lot of work but sure. i'm just like this is you treat this like work obviously as yeah. you said as you said and it's yeah. like how do you basically go i'm just doing music now full time mm -hmm. yeah and i don't have to do anything i else. remember the exact moment all right yeah funny enough so what you were talking about i have that that mindset of like i'm doing a job but i'm also doing music on the side and maybe it works out maybe it doesn't that was never an option for me it music was going to be the thing that i was doing no matter what when i got a i got a drum set from uh uh the summer of my junior year going to my senior year and i just i just fell in love with it I was in jazz band my senior year, and I wasn't that great, but I was, you know, I was getting better. I wanted to practice. I wanted to get better. And I, I remember while when I was applying to colleges, I told my grandfather and I told my dad, I was like, I got to, I have to do this. I have to do yeah. music. And Fuck they were, yeah. they all looked at me like I was fucking crazy. It was like, you've only been playing for a year. And I go, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. And every one of my family members was like, yeah, you got to have a backup plan. Right. And I looked in their face and I go, no, I'm not. I don't Dude, have yes, I don't I have a back, I don't I have a backup stories. plan because when you have a backup plan, it's easy to just go. Ah, you know, if it doesn't work out. Right. Fine. At least I got that. I got that realtor license and fuck that. And a hundred thousand uh, for a quick house. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to focus on my time on that. One hundred percent. And that was never an option for me. Nice. Never an option. So you didn't give yourself the fucking fallback. N there's no there's no fault. Because you either, you're going to use it. I at have some point to. If you if yeah. you're, if you're if you have it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and and I told my grandfather this. Like he, I, I, he owns his own business. Whether people believed in him that he was going to do it or not, he did it. My grandmother was there every step of the way. She helped him build this massive like paving company that yeah. they built from scratch. And you know he didn't have any help, but he had the determination, the heart. You know, I'm gonna fucking do this. He didn't go work for a pavement guy. He did. Or, he I actually mean, he, he worked he for the state first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he worked for for the Texas Department of of uh, I forgot what it is, but it's, it's uh he worked for the state as far as like fuck. What are, I I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, Not important. It, it, doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. Anyways, but he worked for the state, learned everything that he needed to about paving and about you know. Uh, uh, civil engineering mm -hmm. and then he pretty much without a college degree became a civil engineer <sighs> built it from the ground up and I told him as like look grandpa you you did this yeah, it's not, you fa built it's your not own fair shit. to not like well, support I, me doing my no, shit. No, for sure. And there like being being Mexican and, and coming from a family who's like very supportive it's all about uh, security you know mm -hmm. yeah are you stable enough to do this right you, you know is this going to be a stable job anyways and I was like I don't know I yeah. can't tell you that, but I will tell you that I'm going to work every fucking day of my life to get to where I need to be and where I want to be. And that kind of like that kind of changed his mind. He goes, OK, pick it, go to school. You got that dog in you, bro. I Dude, was from if you if you love something enough and you you, you got to do it, you yeah. just have to. That's you how go, I feel about all this shit. There you go. You know I, mean, I mean, you fucking you you created this fucking cool space here, too. And I, you, I found the space and a lot of the stuff was here. But. <laughs> But 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 the I, idea. But I but I'm paying for it. Yeah, right. And you're doing and <laughs> yeah. you're doing it though. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We're so, out here doing it every week, baby. You there you know go. What I mean? you gotta, there you go. I'm like, I gotta get it to somebody for the week. I, yeah. Even if it's just Harrison's got to sit down with me, we're gonna do one. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta do one every week. You know Harrison's I mean? locking it down. Thank you, bro. Yeah. 100. percent So yeah. I told him that, and I went to and and I was lucky enough that he paid he paid for college from the company. He's like every grand every grandchild that wanted to go to college got paid for. 
Yeah. So I was okay, cool. I'm going to go to UT for music and I'm going to get it done. I didn't get into the music program the first year. I wasn't good enough. It is what it is. So are you from here? I'm from I'm from Brownsville. I'm oh, from the Rio Grande okay. Valley. So you're a fucking yeah, check you're it out. a real you're a real Texan, bro. Yeah, dude. Nine five six, bro. Uh, all right. Nine five six. Put a beach at nine five six. Nine five six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I I didn't get in my first year. Okay. Uh, and I practiced that entire semester. I uh I didn't have so when you go to public school in in uh, uh in Texas you have to do class a year of class or you have to audition on classical uh drums or classical percussion, and on drum set jazz. So I wanted to go to school for jazz to learn kit. I didn't have anything prepared because I didn't know that that's what you had to do. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, I'm fucked pretty much. <laughs> what were you playing at the time? I mean, what were you playing? What, what I, I was just playing. I was I was only practicing for the drum set audition. Oh, I didn't have anything okay. prepared. I so see. it looked like I wasn't good enough to be in the program. I wasn't. Yeah. So that whole first semester, I practiced and practiced, practiced primarily for the, the classical audition. And I went in... Uh, at the end of December of, the, of my first semester, and I remember praying to God, I was like, I, please give me a sign if this is right for me. And I went in as confident as I could be. I did it. I, did, I, I killed my drum set audition the first time and the second time, so that wasn't even a, prob- a that problem. That was an issue, yeah. And then a day later, I get an email, and it was like, yo, you're accepted. Oh. Dude, it was, it, that, that, was, that was the moment that I was like, I'm supposed to be doing this. Yeah. For sure. Fuck yeah. I'm going to college for fucking playing drums. I was already in college. I was fucking studying biology, dude. <laughs> Bio. And it, yeah. yeah, it was. You're like, somebody pluck me from this making and put an me end behind to a drum kit. Yeah, yeah, for real. Absolutely. <laughs> and while while everybody else was studying bio, I was in the practice room shedding like fucking snare etudes and xylophone shit <laughs> just, to, just so I could practice drums, just so it's I could study awesome. drums. So I did that. I I and uh, I ended up starting the program at the beginning of my sophomore year because you can't start halfway through the year. So I finished the music program in three years, graduated, and I had told my grandfather's like, "Hey, when I graduate, I want you to be there at my senior recital." And that was the first time that my grandfather and my grandmother, before she passed, they saw me play for the first time. And the, like they haven't seen me play since. My grandmother's already, you know, she's in heaven right now, and my grandfather hasn't seen me play since. But that was the moment that he was like. I get what you're doing now. Nice. Yes. You yes. Get, you we can did put everything. that to bed. Exactly. We can put that to bed. Exactly. Nice. So he, and then from that day forward, my parents and everybody around me and my grandparents were like, all right, cool. We're Stoked. backing you in whatever you yeah, do. We're proud. Absolutely. Which feels good. It but was, you didn't need it. Well, you I, I, well, I told him I was going to do it either way. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wasn't going to Was that kind of a big driving, like chip on your shoulder? 100%. Kind of, kind of thing? Like, 100%. I'm going to fucking show these motherfuckers. I'm yeah. Show them. And right. then also, while I was in the program, the first, the, the first audition that I went to to, to audition for a, a band or, or, you know, a small, uh, a quartet or quintet is all the guys that were there before me, I got to see them play and I freaked the fuck out. Dude. I, granted, I only been playing for a year and a half. That's it. I got in there, and those guys have been playing since they were five, four or five, grew up playing, grew up in musical families. So you see these guys fucking Scary. swinging like a yeah. motherfucker, listening to Tony and Elvin and all these crazy jazz artists when they were, you know, in high school or, like, even younger than that. Parents they, had them in lessons. Yeah, all for sure. The whole nine I yards. Didn't have, I didn't have that. You're, I, out, you're out the mud, bro. So I, I was like, holy fuck, you have to play like this? Like, when you graduate, I freak the fuck out. Yeah. And it was like, at that point, it was like either sink or swim. So I, I, I practiced every fucking day. I was in that practice room overnight sometimes. I would sleep in the practice room to try to, like, figure out my shit. Yeah. While, every, while all my friends were out going to fucking parties and Prom hanging night with girls. Or whatever. And, yeah. This was in college. Oh, so was, college. Uh, you know, yeah, they yeah. were going to fucking frat parties and right. with girls and drinking. Like, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any of that shit. Slippery, easy slope to not not working on your dreams, right? Dude, one hundred percent. How many and, people don't start working on their dreams until they're done with college, right? You know. So. I but I my situation was different. Yeah. I just started playing, and I I just like I needed to do that at that time. Yeah. And it helped. I graduated, I, you know, I, I was, I started playing gigs when I was a junior and senior and that carried on to post-college after I graduated and the moment where I figured that out. So I was working a job right when I graduated. I fucking was slanging cookies at Tiff Streets for two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Hell yeah. 25th, uh, 2016, <laughs> all the 2017 into 2018. So at one point at the end of 2017 into 2018, 
I'm working the Tiff Streets job as a as a cookie delivery driver. This is after college. This is after college. Okay. So I graduated in 2015. I get a job right like a month two later at Tiff Streets, and all that time I'm you know doing restaurant gigs here and there, jazz gigs here and there. I'm playing with Emily Wolf. I'm playing with Magna Carta, and then I'm playing with Gina all at the same time just to try to make ends meet. But it wasn't you know wasn't enough to pay rent. Yeah. So uh, that goes on for two years. I end up getting hired by this. Uh, uh, it's like a cover band situation. Okay. So it's like like a party band. Th- those motherfuckers make money. They man. do absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I get hired, and at that point, I'm you know if I play if I play four weddings in a month, I can pay rent, I can play my car, I can pay all my bills, and then also be able to do Gina and Magna and Emily and be able to fucking have a career now. Yeah. And at that point, when I got that job, I was able to go to my boss. Sean actually he was he a musician as well but he was the he was the manager at Tiff Streets and I go yo man you've helped me out so much through these past years if I had if 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 I ever had a gig he would be like you don't have to work tonight you're yeah, good that's so that's so necessary he played a big role in that whole portion of to let me go and play cuz he was a musician yeah. and so he wanted to play and it, you know just didn't it didn't end up the way he wanted it to but he he saw something in me and was like yo man go and do it yeah. as long as you let me know with time i got you Hell and he yeah. did every time i had a gig that's sick go. yeah I, I'm, i've been pretty fortunate for that too yeah like just absolutely i almost kind of some places i was just like yo I'm, i gotta go play sorry I'm gonna go and you know it, yeah the, the whole request and time like if it's like it's more like i'm gonna go do this 100 percent. just letting you know like that has to be <laughs> that has to be the approach almost for for, yeah. for a musician you know like hey i'm just letting you know i, I got a show in a week to like you know put, put somebody else on the schedule 100 you know, i gotta go communication know? is a Commun- key for yeah. that and he knew from the very beginning when i got hired i was like this is just a part-time job so that i can play music he right goes, great yeah. this is perfect for you then yeah i made great money i got to listen to a lot of it's funny i i was delivering cookies and on the road and i'd be listening to the music that i was going to play later that night so it kind yeah. of it, it gave you time to just kind of sit there and yep veg out absolutely that's and awesome. and prepare myself for the gig that I was playing later on that night. That's so sick. It's the best. And when after I got that PDA gig, it it uh uh it was a boy band. We we played we played NSYNC, we played yeah, Voice to Men, dude. we did all that shit. Let's go. So and it was it was the first time that we were all on in ears. We we're we we're creating the tracks ourselves. Like it was cool shit. Yeah. It was cool shit. A lot of people Good like experience. Yeah, it was great experience. And really getting into those tracks playing that style i never played that style of music before so like transcribing all those drum parts you know listen uh, playing to a click live in front of people playing all these parties playing with my best friends it we we all four of us in that band learned so much about how to create a show a pop show like yeah an exact pop show and how to how to give people a good a good show 100 percent. that's awesome and it was it yeah that was that was a uh, a huge change in my or like turning point in my life was like i can now be able to play music for a living and not have to have another job that was it that's awesome yeah so wait i'm sorry i missed it no so problem. you 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 did you you got a different you got another gig like a more a more pain that gig. was it so that cover Which, band oh, gig. The cover band yeah right, so i was the pop, playing in sync cover band yes yeah yeah exactly so i was playing with uh, with these three artists emily wolf gina and magna carta while i was working at tiff streets right and then that cover band because we were you know we were playing weddings and private parties and doing Push all you that. Over the edge. Yeah, dude. That's now awesome. I can now I can pay all my bills. And you still playing with them? Or? No, no, yeah. no, no. So a lot of look- a lot of crazy shit happened with the end of that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. What's it? we we'll leave that out. Yeah, uh, let's leave that yeah, out. Yeah, we'll leave the T out. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but so so then you, so right now is. You, is Kill Tony just the the main thing that you do that pays the bills? It's yeah. Well, they all they all pay the bills now. So you so you got a couple in circulation. Yeah, so, so yeah, and, yeah. And Gina, do you, have, do you have time to take another one on if you need to here and there? I like did. I just I just got off a tour with a dude named Miles Miller, and I okay. that's so these past couple of weeks where you know my buddy James and my buddy Daniel were covering for me on Kill Tony. That's where I was. Oh, okay. I was out on tour with Miles Miller. Where'd you go? Fucking everywhere, dude. Uh, Nebraska, Montana flying uh, to all these yeah. places no, or driving? dude we were in a ford f-150 with the fucking trailer, trailer. in the van. yeah dude it's tight because you're still you can still get to rough it too a little bit we did like that we like did. dude that probably that's that's fun because i bet you you know like residency drummers probably like although it's like 
maybe more like cush because you don't have to worry about traveling or something like you which probably is miss cool being, too yeah it's cool but yeah. you probably miss being on the road sometimes and yeah maybe getting to do the the rock star shit and like the like, <laughs> it's like play, not you know, always rock star well, shit yeah, i'll tell you that but getting yeah. to play for a bit you know playing big different playing different rooms and playing you know what i mean absolutely that, that shit absolutely. is kind of what it's all about yeah you know what i mean yeah for sure yeah so, so that that was a that was a uh a cool experience and then i flew back to play one kill Tony and then flew back out to finish the tour. And then now that, the, that, that, that tour is done, I can just do everything at home now. Yeah. Yeah. The, is, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say the one thing that I do miss without being on the road is that you can only do so much of your routine, right? Because city to city every right. day. And I work out every day. That's part of my routine. Yeah. I try to shed every day. I have things that I want to be able to do. So working out on the road is really hard, man. Yeah, you're playing. You're staying up late. <sighs> Tell me about moving. it, bro. Yeah, we, we try to hit the. If we're not too hungover, we try to hit the fucking Planet Fitness, you know, yeah, whatever. Dude. And yeah, half of it. us get in there and half of us don't. Yeah, and then it alternates. Yeah, you know? our brought, drummer's the same way though. He's I love like, it. He's like you would. You probably get along with him pretty good. Fuck yeah, yeah Garrett. Right? Like, yeah, Garrett. Yeah, come on, a, man. He's all about the just drumming and working out. That's that's my whole fucking thing. So every every day on the road. There was a couple of days in, in like there that I didn't, but I brought my kettlebell with me, mm-hmm. and I, I. That's all you need, right? Yeah, sure. that's all you need, man. Yeah. And you just forty five minutes to an hour. It's hard to stick. I've been trying to stick to a routine, man, too, with the uh, with with the working out. You yeah. know what I mean? It's so, what helps it's me tough. is community. Community, yeah. Community. I noticed that actually uh, on your. I've been looking at your story more recently yeah. since we said we we're gonna do this, and mm-hmm. it was just like you. You're always with with a bunch like a team of dudes working. Yeah, out. yeah. We, you guys I've are got doing like strongman shit. Pretty much on it. Uh, it's on it, Jim, over in South. Oh, Austin. you're at on it. Yeah. Okay. Cool, dude. The community at on it is second to none, man. So that's I'll where the mo- that's why that. it's that's what's worth what you pay because you get the community and all that. It's it's so worth it, dude. Cool. And all four of those guys, my buddy Justin, my buddy Diego, my buddy Jake, and now my buddy Dane, who's also an incredible piano player, and actually, uh. He covers for John for a lot of shit, mm-hmm. like on the Gary gig, and has a shout out to the Homies. That's the name of the band. They play every <laughs> Thursday night at the Continental nice. Gallery upstairs. I still haven't been to Continental. Club. You gotta fucking come, man. I'll come check yeah. out. You guys yeah. hang out there? Yeah, on cool. specifically Thursday nights. Okay. Cool. I don't know if they're doing it tonight because I know they're they're playing with uh, my buddy James. He's a drummer. He fills in for me on Kill Tony. He's got a band called Sketch, and they're playing a, a festival tonight. I think. Dane, Matt, John, James, like they're incredible musicians. All those guys, they're my they're my older brothers, man. I look up to all of them. That's and, awesome. Yeah. They keep me growing every fucking day. You need that shit, bro. Dude, you have you so gotta that's, surround yourself with people that are that are that are pushing, that are that's, always trying to what whatever it is. Whatever you do. And in, in the gym, like the guys who I, I work out with, they're all bigger than me, they're all stronger than me. Yeah. If I don't have that, I'm never gonna grow. You yeah. always have to do that with in musically. Dane, John, Matt, D Madness, J- uh, James, my dude Charles, Daniel, all these guys that I are f- I'm friends with, they're all light years ahead of me as far as like where we are in our journey. But I they they help me grow and grow and grow and grow every day. Right. Every day. Every day. It's awesome. I yeah, I owe a lot of the, a lot of shit to them. It's crazy how like I've talked about this a couple times on here, but it's crazy how like the level of music out here is yeah. like so much higher. Like not even to dog on like where I'm from, but mm-hmm. it's just like like there's not a lot of dudes out there, like and in a lot of a lot of places yeah. that are like able to just like I don't know play bar shows because yeah. they're because they're not only because they're so good, but because there's a market for it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you can, you can, There's you place can to play. You can make a living off of fucking doing music out here. You, you know can. what I mean? If you, yeah. if you, if you, if you do good enough, and there's, there's a ton of stage time for people because every bar, every restaurant mm-hmm. has fucking, you know, a stage, and they're trying to do live music every Tuesday or what? Dude, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, I feel like, and you know, maybe I'm wrong here, but it's like, I growing up in Portland, I feel like that, that it, it's always like, like I was saying, like the dudes that are like, it's their second, it's like their yeah. love, it's their hobby, it's what they do for fun. Yeah and and uh they they are always having to like work that like you know that job to keep to keep the roof over their head but that's also cool too man yeah that is cool yeah too. that's yeah, also no. cool too that's if the you cool thing about music it's yeah. like it doesn't it's you can be as committed as you are able to yeah you know a lot of my favorite drummers too here in town they have jobs you know yeah. and they play drums and they're killer they're yeah. killer they just you know they they want to have a secure uh a secure jobs like money coming in that's dope 
But just That's the fact awesome. that the, this place, like, you can still kind of, that dream is still alive here. Of, like, yeah, I'm going to be the guy at the guitar, or at the bar with my guitar in, a, like, a bucket. For sure. You know what I mean? And, dude, we crush Nashville out here, bro. I think so. I think we, I like, I think we, I like Nashville a lot. Like, yeah. but, you know, it's no shade on, on what anyone out there is doing. But it's, like, yeah. like the like the going to live music. Like, a, a guy at a bar here is so high, high tier. Like, you you can't count anyone out. You, you know can't. what I mean? Like, if somebody's like, okay, we're, we got Scott here. He's going to be playing some songs <laughs> at the bar. You're like, I'm going to see what the fuck Scott What's is working on? with real quick before I before yeah. <laughs> I, before I close out. Because yeah. Scott might might be shredding up there. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know? I think the one thing that Nashville has that we don't is, uh, uh, like, opportunities. You yeah, know, there's industry. Industry. Yeah. Yeah, the industry there that you can get put on a fucking big country rock gig, dude. Yeah. Austin doesn't have that. Yeah. It's a little bit different. It's a little different, that way. For sure. Yeah, the big the big industries, uh, L.A., New York, and Nashville. Mm-hmm. We are now climbing that that ladder. That's dope. You know, now that Rogan and Tony and all these guys are here, now all the comedians are coming here. Mm-hmm. So music, comedy, art. It's adjacent, dude. We're it's all intertwined now. Yeah. Chris Rogers does art with us every Monday night. He's a part of the show. Yeah. Like that's. And he, Is that the same guy from L.A.? Or is that the... He's actually from South Carolina. Oh, I yeah. mean the same guy that did the art when the show was in LA. There's like a... Uh, uh, no, Ryan J.E. Yeah, Ryan... Right? So Ryan actually... Here? Ryan is not here. Ryan okay. still lives in LA. But Ryan Ryan was here on Monday. I just... Nice. Had, yeah, I was talking with him in the green room. Incredible dude. And like a huge lover of music too. Yeah. Uh, Those guys' artwork is just crazy. The insane. Guys, the guys both of them. do that live painting shit. Yeah. And like, they both did. they both did it live and now... Since Ryan doesn't live here, you can see the you can see the art at the end of the mm-hmm. at the end of the episode online. But he did him and him and Chris both did the live art uh, this past Monday. It was fucking great, dude. That's that kind yeah. of shit that like people I think have the same thought about when they see people do music, you yeah. know. And they're like, I could never do that, right? Like, yeah. like, like I feel that way when I see somebody fucking paint some shit like that. I'm like, dude, there's no way I'm drawing anything like that Bro. or painting anything like yeah. that. Yeah, and do to they do it do in that a with certain a paintbrush, dude. <laughs> insane and with a certain amount of time too yeah like is they're like these, running against the clock it's crazy that is so crazy they're they're both of them are immensely talented yeah man. yeah and just fucking cool dudes dude cool fucking dudes kill tony is like a weird tornado of talent it kind of sucks all the talented people in it's you know crazy what I mean? it's cool There's it's just always some... fucking crazy i'm blessed to be a part of that i was family. there i was in the house that night when uh rick diaz had his appear his first when he got the gold ticket the golden ticket it was crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like Rick's. Th- Rick's yeah. really cool, man. Yeah. He's a nice yeah. guy. I love that dude. Yeah. The, yeah. the beef with. I mean, I'm gonna have to go home team on the beef. You know, I, like, Hans gonna, is I'm Hans a, is also my dude. You know, yeah. it's it's. I, I don't know if what the team. what the beef is like. I don't know if, if it's, it's real. If it's real or yeah. if it's like yeah. social media. They're thing. doing they're doing uh, the wrestling. They're doing the wrestling like fucking build up right now. Dude, people are fucking watching. Oh, they're people ready. are keeping up. Man. Oh, that's another thing I want to ask you about the stadium thing. Yeah, when you guys H-E-B played when, Center. when you got, well no the one that you guys already did oh the last the, New Year's the uh, what was that like? ACL Live yeah playing that was a big the ten ass. the ten year anniversary how many people were there a little over three thousand okay yeah was that one of the was that a big show for you it or? was fucking huge for all yeah, of us yeah. yeah it's great was that was it what like I mean on the scale of like have you played in other bands or anything like was that your biggest the most people the biggest room you've no. played in okay. uh uh-uh. no the biggest the biggest show I've played was with Gary with Gary, Gary Clark, Clark Jr. yeah. Yeah, okay. we I played two sold out nights uh, in 2019. The, before all the Kill Tony shit happened, uh, in 2019 we did two sold out nights at Stubbs Amphitheater. <sighs> yeah, dude, that place is huge. The energy in that place, like hometown hero. Yeah, Gary. Gary had 14 people on stage, full horn section, DJ. Ooh. I was on stage with the DJ. Uh, it was just, just an orchestra. It was just a party. Huge on stage. Huge man. Awesome. And then uh, that we played two ACL uh, ACL performances right at bef- ACL. At ACL, okay. we were we were right before uh, uh, Childish Gambino, Donald okay. Glover. Yeah, nice. Yeah, That's so sick. It was fucking Did sick. Did you get to meet some cool people at that or? Yeah, at ACL? I mean, yeah, we were the, we were. Uh, who did we meet that night? Was that two years ago or something? Or? 2019. 2019. Okay. Yeah, so f- fuck, four years ago now. That's crazy, dude. It's moving quick, dude. Yeah, well, COVID fucking COVID ruined like a bunch of ca- shit. It made like a year and a half not count. It did. Yeah. It did. It ruined a bunch of shit, but then also like where I'm at now, if COVID wouldn't have happened, Same. those guys wouldn't have moved here. You know what I'm saying? Everything, we wouldn't yeah. be on Kill Tony. It's kind of like you can't change. You can't go like, oh, I wish, like, or like no. live in regret or any of that you stuff can't. because it's kind of like shit just works out the way it works out. 
and it's yeah and it's like if you're good and you do good and you do good work and are good to people then yeah good shit will you know it'll always work out you know? i think so dude I, you just have to, you just have to have trust and and you got you got to just be fully committed to that journey yeah on your path and, and like that's i feel like that's so apparent with your story you told us here because it's like like the the word obviously just spread about you like be right to through the music industry people because how are you getting hit up for all these jobs you know what i mean like yeah so it seems like the 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 recipe is to like just do bust your ass and do good work and yeah. try to you know network right you got to meet people yeah and then you got to like get get the gig do a good job and then everybody tells people like hey this is you guys need a drummer like you know yeah. Mike's the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd love to be. Because <laughs> it, it just because it just kind of snowballs. It seems right. It Is does. That how all this stuff kind of popped up. It yeah. Just kind of. It's it's all just word of mouth. Yeah. Well, John has been John Dees has been a big a big uh, uh, help with me for that. Like with the Gary thing. Like I remember being in Alaska. I was visiting my ex fiance out in a. Uh, uh, she was working on a on a ship on a cruise ship. And I was out there and I was flying home. I was in Prince Rupert, Alaska, eating by my <laughs> fucking. I mean, it's, it actually wasn't Alaska. It was Prince Rupert, Canada, off the coast of Canada and be in like the BC, just north of BC area. Um, I'm sitting at a fucking bar looking out. And I'm, I'm seeing otters jump out onto the uh, <laughs> onto the, the cove area, uh, area and coming back in and eating fish by myself. And I get a I get a text message from John. He goes, "Yo, man, you ready to get that GCJ work?" And I'm like, "What the fuck? What, what GCJ? Gary Clark? What the fuck?" Like, and I texted him. I was like, "Yeah, dude, fuck yeah." yeah. You know when? <laughs> were you ready, or were you like, "I'm ready"? I'm even though I'm not ready, I'm ready. Well, like that's 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 the thing. So when he told me, he's like, "Yo, I want you to come play percussion with with this big band," and I was like, "Fuck, I've never played percussion before." What does that mean? So in, like different from drums. Johnny Radelat was the drummer at the time for Gary. Percussion means on this on this specific record, uh, Sheila E recorded all the percussion on 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 uh, Gary's record, and I you know congas, timbales like uh, 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 sample stuff. So, so every like, anything under the sun really. That, yeah, that like all percussive. the bells and whistles yeah. that's on top of yeah, you know all that. So I'm doing everything else. Shakers and maracas yeah, and shit. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. All of it. Sheila did all the re all those recordings. So when he asked me, I was like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to fucking do it. And I like- I'm going to do whatever I need to do to do this. Exactly. Yeah. I listened on on my flights, on the flights home from that area. I uh, I listened to that entire record down and a, and a couple other songs because John had sent me a set list. So I listened to every one of those songs. I listened to what was on the record, and I still have notes to this day on like what instruments were used on that record. So if I didn't have it, I went to Tommy's Drum Shop and I bought everything that I didn't have. Oh, shit. And I put this whole rack together, and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's let's start. I just start with the newest shit first. I played it down. I had an SPD pad. I got. I made my own samples from that. Uh, so, like, from those records recorded that recorded the instrument. And yeah, I, tr I so I I was a I was a splice user at that time. So I found um, a bunch of different samples that sounded like it. And with all the the experience that I had working with the PDA, like with that boy band cover band, we were making those tracks and those samples to sound like the original tracks. Mm. That was the experience that I used to create those samples for Gary. Oh. So I put it all together uh, and. I prepared that set for an entire month before I even played those shows. So like I I knew Just those put fucking that work in, man. Exactly. Exactly. And I and when we got to that first rehearsal at Soundcheck, which was on 51st, it's not on 51st anymore because of COVID, but they didn't like I I did everything. I played everything that I practiced and nobody nobody even knew that I was there, which is what exactly That's what, what I want. wanted. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have to tell me anything. They didn't really give me any notes. They're like, whatever you did, keep doing it. Boom. That's, yeah. And it, and the, because I put that that amount of time and work at, into it, that that entire like four shows that those two weeks, some of the best shows that I think I've ever played with those with all my friends. Because you made them that way. Well, basically. yeah, I, like, I wasn't just going to fucking go into a show, up. a show like that yeah. in front of 30,000 people so at ACL. People. Like, it's crazy. When you're up there, it doesn't feel like that. No, no. 
It doesn't. Yeah. You're just up there with your friends, friends playing cool music. The Peterson brothers came up with us, uh, both ACL, uh, both ACL shows, uh, played with us on a song, and we, we, it was just family on stage. That's so sick. Yeah, and it made it that much more fun. Man. Yeah, yeah. And when it's fun, you're just in the pocket, just crushing. Yeah, and the work's already done. I did, I did fucking a whole work, a whole month's work of before that. And I and the reason why I know I listened to those songs so much, you know, you, the Spotify recap that you get at oh, the end yeah, of the year, yeah. it was all just Gary Clark, just Gary Clark, like, shit. Just, like hours and hours and hours of just Gary Clark music. It was it was funny to see. Yeah. I was like, damn, I You're did like, put that, a fucking yeah, lot of work that, into. That's all I listened to. That's how much I. That's how much I fucking was preparing yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, what do you? I guess what what kind of shit do you like to just listen? Do you listen to music rec recreationally too, All the time. or are you just like what have you been listening to recently? Dude, what are you locked in on right now? Locked like, in, locked in for sure is like Foo Fighters and Van Halen right now. Really nice. Yeah, it hit me really hard when Taylor passed. Oh, I remember where I was. So I was on sad. tour with Magna Carta, dude. We were in Boise, Idaho, and I looked at my phone. I was looking on the thing, and I just see like a bunch of pictures of Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Like, do you know that guy? Uh, no, I never oh, met Taylor okay. Hawkins. Yeah, uh, John did. So like, uh, there's been a couple times where the Gary Gary Clark's camp like was in the same area with Dave and Taylor and all those guys from the Foo Fighters. So like they've they've been in the same room and hung out and did a bunch of shit. But it it, it hit me hard. It, it just he, his playing was you know has been a huge influence on mine. I I love the Foo Fighters. Dave the same way. You know. When that happened, I I just dug even deeper into that music, yeah. just as much as I could, uh, and I I nonstop have been listening to that those records, studying them, and then now that Josh is playing with them, I had been a Josh Freeze fan for years. Like he's on a bunch of records that I listened to. The very first record that I bought was, uh, <laughs> funny enough, it's a. Uh, uh, Avril Lavigne's Complicated. Yeah, dude. That was he's, one of my first ones, too. He's the drummer on oh, that record. Oh, shit. Dude. Okay. He did the whole thing. He did that one, and he did the See, next one, too. I don't know too. any of these 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 players, bro. Like, yeah. That's the pro like, it's like It's like football. Like, I don't know who's playing football yeah, anymore. Yeah, I get you know, it. I know, like, the metal guys from, like... Well, because that's the stuff that's that you... That's the stuff that... Exactly. That's the world that I exist in. Yeah, You know absolutely. what I mean? But... Yeah, maybe, maybe I need to start digging around more. I'm know? just a nerd like that. Yeah. I want to... That's cool, though. I mean, you're fucking obsessed with what you do. That's awesome. Yeah. That's what I love about you, dude. Thanks, it's fucking man. Awesome. It's cool I to meet it. other people that fucking are on that same wavelength with Thanks, what they're man. doing. Like I'm doing a lot of different shit, but I'm you just, are. I'm You're just fucking doing, doing a ton of shit. shit. I'm just doing shit that I love and want to do, and it makes it keeps me happy, so I can do like the stuff that right now is making me money, which is like love it, and not get and then avoiding burnout by that, by because like Thursdays are my podcast day where yeah. I know that like I'm gonna have a fucking sit down Good chat with a homie, yeah, and absolutely. it's gonna and it's gonna reinvigorate me for the week when I have to go sit on the computer and like edit photos, which is like boo hoo. It's a pretty fucking fun job. You know <laughs> what I mean? I get to go to food events and shit and i fucking, fucking take love pictures it, of food but it's like you know it's it's still you get burnt out on stuff so mm -hmm. when it's just when you're working for somebody else you know what i mean this is like yeah. the shit that like i love enjoyment you know I mean? so I'm, you I'm, enjoy I'm obsessed shit. and I, since i've like been doing the podcast thing more i'm like i'm i'm obsessed with podcasts i think at a level that is is both unhealthy and, <laughs> and no i'm just kidding and but it's like it's probably abnormal like you know like some people just like oh yeah i have my shows i listen to i'm like watching how they're doing stuff yeah like, just like i'm nerding out about it like you like you that's a big out about thing. drums dude absolutely you know what i mean and that's what i was going that was what i was going to get at with the with like knowing who's on records like that's oh just, yeah yeah it's a super nerdy thing but i have to know because if i like the shit and i want to sound like that i gotta know where the source right. is i gotta go so josh was on like josh played drums on a on the good charlotte record too the the oh, first yeah, one like banger. lifestyles of yeah. the rich and famous those two were like some of the first cds that i bought that i was like man that's what i was listening to and back now then. he's in your one of and, your favorite bands and now he yeah when he uh that whole like black and white practice video that they put out it was like josh freeze is our new drummer i record i screen grabbed all that because it was only on uh, was it freeform? It was some some, some like streaming news thing. article thing. But it was it was like they they put out an hour long practice video, uh, uh, like preparing. Uh, what is it? Uh, Foo Fighters prepare for shows or whatever yeah. it is. I screen grabbed uh, a couple of recordings, and I went back and like played everything that Josh did, and I wanted to see what the difference was from Taylor's playing to his, and they're so totally different. Yeah. Like the vibes are different. Like Josh has this ferocity and playing a little bit quicker 
And like when Taylor plays, it's a lot more relaxed, but it's, you know, it's just got a different feel to it. And I like both. I just love both guys playing. And I wanted to like I learned, which actually you can see in some of the 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 drum offs that I was doing that I was listening to those recordings that (laughs) from Josh, like I was trying to emulate what he was doing on those records. Yeah. Or I mean, on that in that performance in general. And uh, I'm every every uh, double pedal shit that I've been practicing and getting into is all Josh right now. Nice. All Josh. That's cool that like you can see the difference even even in the same, you can hear it even in, like you can see and hear the difference even playing the same music. Dude. You know what I mean? Because of the like little intricacies they yeah. do with their fills. Yeah. And, like, just like maybe the, their different drum sounds. There's, it's like all so different. many variables. It's all dude. It's all different. It's the same music, but it feels different. But in it in a great way. It feels right. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. feel different wrong. It feels yeah. different, but and still it, right. And I saw and and when they did the Taylor Hawkins tribute in London. Uh, at at the I think it was at O2 or no it was at Wembley I think uh, they had all the different drummers come and play some of the Foo Fighter stuff mm-hmm. and then they did it in LA at the Forum you know uh, didn't uh, they have like a little kid play something too it was his son oh his son yeah right. Sean, his son Sean See, he I'm came so up with all no stuff. no I'm it's sorry. all good man like Sean came up and played my hero and it was the yeah. fucking dude went seeing seeing it was literally seeing Tear, him tear jerking. I, dude, I was I started crying the first yeah. time I watched it. It was really hard to watch. Like his son emulated his father, <sighs> plays exactly like him. The way his sticks come up, like it's like the every, John Bonham shit. Like, yeah, but Jason doesn't play like his dad. Oh, okay, it's okay. it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, John John nobody will ever play like John Bonham. Yeah, John is up here. Yeah, with Buddy Rich and Vinnie Calyuta and all those guys. Like nobody's ever gonna play like those guys. Yeah, Sean plays like his dad. Crazy. You can see the lineage. There's videos of Sean sitting side side stage stage with a pad and sticks, watching his dad play. And there's videos of him de- like Taylor dedicating these songs to his son, and he's sitting right here. That that like bond. I just like, got like some chills, dude. It's crazy. About it, to be honest, look look it up, man. Yeah. It's like he. He's I think I watched a little part. I, I watched a part of that video. Yeah, where he where, at where that he's playing benefit, or at the like tribute. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. Dude, it it was tear jerking. I mean, man. It, it's he he like brought the essence of Taylor back. Yeah, lineage. It's it's direct lineage, obviously. Yeah. And it's a a dad that wanted his son there involved all the too, time, spending time. He was him. there at all the like. Oh, that's me. what I'm so close to my dad. I'm like, dude, Fuck. me too, me too. My dude, my dad texts for me now. Like he te- he yeah. he comes and texts drums for me now, dude. Hey. Not not too long ago, he was here. I had just got off a tour, and I I. My parents were coming up. My sisters were here. We were supposed to have a family get together, and everybody was going to be cool. I forgot that my my schedule just was so fucking jam packed. I played five shows in four days when they were there, and I double booked myself on accident. I was supposed to play with the Peterson brothers brothers, and then go and do a wedding later later that night. And my dad, I was like, "Hey, pop, can you tech for me this weekend? Yeah. Like when you come up here, this is what you got to do." Boom, boom, boom. He's like, "No problem." Your mom and I will take care of it. Oh, nice. They came with me to the supportive Peter- parents, bro. dude. It, they get it. <laughs> yeah. They get it, dude. They get I love it. it. My dad was a DJ, so like all the music, all the music influences that I got from when I was a kid, it's from it's from him. That's so. It's sick. from him. Yeah. It is. It's all lineage. Yeah. Crazy. And dude, funny enough, the com- the comedy stuff is from him too, man. I he uh, he had two records on vinyl. He had a Robin Williams record, and then he had uh, um, uh, Richard Pryor's Richard Pryor. Wanted. Okay. He had both those records, and I remember listening to those when I was like 12 or 13. He had a record player outside, and I go into the garage and put headphones on. And I was like, what the f-? I I yeah. 100% shouldn't have been listening to it, right. but it's like... Nobody I, should have been listening to comedy when they found comedy. Yeah. Right? For sure. That's part of it. Yeah, That's but like you, could, you could feel the rawness of what, what Richard was saying. It's All this shit was real, son. Did they have real did shit. they have bands playing with them too on those old the old comedians? Did they did any other comedians have like a band type thing playing with them? I think Johnny the Johnny Carson was the one who kind of started all that because it was, he a, was ten, a TV show. It was a Tonight Show. Okay, it was a Tonight Show. Yeah, Ed Shaughnessy was playing drums on that, and Buddy Rich was his best friend. So Buddy used to come and fucking do drum solos with Ed Shaughnessy. That, those videos of that Buddy Rich guy are fucking crazy. Insane. Yeah. Insane. He he is the greatest to ever live. That, He's yeah. been playing since he was two. He was just a he was just a phenom when he was yeah. two. He is the best, the best. Him, John, Vinny, like all these. Steve Gadd's another can one. Can we like, pull up a Buddy Rich video real quick? Yeah, you can actually pull him up, like playing drums on the Tonight Show. And there's a couple videos of Johnny playing drums too. I'm gonna fix the fucking music thing real quick too. 
um, before we uh, play Just it. put John, yeah, 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 Buddy Rich Tonight Show. And then before we play it here, I'm going to fix this Yeah, I think the, the, first, the first one. Um, oh, actually, I can't see it from here. Um, On Johnny go Carson. To, go to the sound preferences, basically, and you just change the output device to the uh, mix master thing. Sorry, Ash. The computer? Yeah, yeah, the prep, yeah. Exactly. There we go. These can, are all I super long because they're compilations. But yeah, we'll just burn through them. We'll yeah, just pull yeah. through them real quick. Sorry, I want to get the sound in our ear holes. Yeah, though. please. I gotta have Buddy's fucking skins in my ear, dude. Where are you? <laughs> I need Buddy's skins in my ear, bro. Yeah, dude. Um. By the way, cool. when, I was, when I was laughing about uh, your dad being a DJ, I, I'm just giggling here, like. Appreciating like all yeah. this influence on your life, you know? yeah, I wasn't yeah. Laughing like at being no, 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 no. <laughs> I I knew you weren't, but it, it's it like all all of his influences became my influences. Yeah. And I remember like after hearing those records, I I went and talked to him. I was like, Yo, who are these guys? Whatever. And then, uh, do you remember when Netflix were had DVDs? The original oh, yeah. Netflix, where oh, yeah. you had to you went online and you chose the DVD that you oh, wanted. Oh yeah, yeah. My dad ordered. Uh, Eddie uh, Eddie Murphy's Delirious oh, nice. and Raw, but Delirious was the first one. He goes, if you're if if you love comedy, if you're ever gonna love comedy, you have to watch this. Yeah, I was fucking so in funny, eighth, seventh dude. or eighth when grade. When he's wearing that crazy dude, it's all orange. It's yeah. like the orange red suit. Yeah. He comes out and does impressions of fucking Michael, Stevie, all the, and his dad, his mom, like everything. I, I, dude, I, it fucking blew my mind how funny he was. Yeah. How and I had just, only I don't know about you, but I had only known Eddie Murphy at the time as like the kids movie guy from like fucking Daddy Daycare. So and, I knew and, and I Nutty knew Professor and shit. I knew SNL and Delirious before he became an actor. Oh, okay. I knew you all that our, shit before. Oh, wow. I was my dad put me on. Dude. Yeah, my dad put me on, and that was Early. like how do how do I make people laugh? Like yeah. how do I do that? So That's do you funniest. do comedy too, or are you just like I or wish, have man. you have you I, ever tried? I I did in 2018, right before I went on tour with Magna Carta. We were we were we were leaving for about a month, and I was like, well, I don't have anything to do. I'm gonna shed. I was I was the music director at that time, so I was like, I had a practice space in my apartment, and I was going through everything, making sure I knew how to like run the tracks and I knew where everything was. And at night, I went to do a couple of uh, open mics, and it was the craziest fucking nerve wracking shit I've ever Isn't done. Isn't it life. weird how it's so weird. different and scary it is? It is because I've been doing it pretty regularly since December. I'm oh, like, so I'm, you you I'm do? Get, I'm getting after it, bro. Fuck yeah, man! Yeah, I'm That's going after awesome. out out to my yonder. Actually, I did a podcast with him like right when I right when I moved here. He was one of the first ones I did here. Yeah, and uh, and he was like. On that podcast, he was like, "Dude, you just need to go do it." Like you have he's, to, because he's from music too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, he yeah. was. I was like, "You know, tell me about like how to get your fucking balls together to go fucking you, do it." Time. And you just have to do it, yeah. and it's just, it's actually been like so. It makes me love music more, dude. I love because, it because like, like it's so. I don't know. I've been doing it for a long time, you yeah. know, and like I, I've said this to no end on the podcast, so people are probably sick of hearing it. But it's like with music too, you get this like inflated sense sometimes mm -hmm. of how good how good you're doing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. of so like you know you're a fucking dog, so you're always like I need I need to I need to grind to be better. You have a you have a good internal dialogue and yeah. self awareness about that stuff. But it's <laughs> but but like uh, for, I wouldn't necessarily for, for say me, it's per, good. Well, but, but for me, per, well, yeah, it's probably toxic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure, it's probably you're probably I'm my worst you're pushing, enemy. Your, pushing your physical health all the and shit. time. All but the like time. for me, as like a fucking rah rah vocalist hype man, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like not to discount, you know what 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 I do and what other people like me do, but it's like um, you kind of I kind of got to this place where I was like, you know, like it, everybody says good set, bro. You know what I mean? Everybody says good, in, in, in a music in, yeah, in a music in setting, a right? Context. But but a con uh -huh. comedy is so the opposite of that well because you get you you get the you get the, the like reaction well and it, the crowd and doesn't say the good good, good well that's try. what that yeah. the crowd will tell you how you did yeah exactly the crowd exactly. will tell you when you go when you go to jams well, and you do shit no nah, i don't okay, thank cool. you man yeah, i appreciate yeah. you uh that's the thing that i love about comedy the most the most is the honesty the raw yes the that's that's what i'm saying it. yeah absolutely 100 yeah, percent. with the the only honesty that i that i've ever like felt like I've got well like the biggest form of honesty I guess when I was a freshman in college I was going to the elephant room uh and signing up on Monday nights so they have an open jam on Monday nights I would get there at nine before they started at nine thirty. I would sign my name at the very top the guy who was running it was an asshole to me 
He was. It is what it is. Yeah. He would put me on at the very end of the night and make me play one song at one thirty in the morning, and it was always like this, like ballad of something. Mm-hmm. Would never let me get on. That's fine. That was me at Creek last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, you, I guess, you know, it's whatever. You just have yeah. to fucking go through it. You're a kid. I'm in school. I'm trying to figure this shit out. I've only been playing for a year, but I got to do it. Yeah. You just have to. So there was one uh, Red Young. He was a, in, 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 like, he's a legend organist in town. He came up to me after one of those nights and he goes, yo, man, you sound great, but here's what you need to do to get better. Like, he had the fucking, like... He every, gave you some fucking feedback. 100%. Which, which is, all the other guys would, like, just fucking dismiss me and be like, yeah, fuck, you're not good enough. Like, they never said that, but you could feel it. Right, yeah. And from your peers, like, that kind of sucks. And and yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. But Red came up to me and goes, yo, man, I like your energy. Here's what you need to do to get better. He saw the grind. He saw the hustle. You're out there yeah. till 1 a.m., fucking i was there eating shit just to play a song on the open mic literally sitting next to the drum chair the entire night because when you go there's uh the stage is like it's in an underground kind of bar but there's tables right here up against the wall and the drum sets right here where you're sitting Mm -hmm. so i'm sitting right here and i'm watching the drummer all night for fucking three four hours and then you get to go up and then i finally get to go up after everybody's fucking left yeah, and I, you which know, is just like dangling a carrot in front of your dude, face, dude. One hundred, right? and he did that multiple times, and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? I'm just trying to learn here. Yeah, and it, but you, know, you were like the new guy at the mic or something. Well, right? I was just, I was the youngest one, yeah. and I was the newest one because I was in school. I just, I had, I, I needed, I would, I heard that the elephant room is where you go to learn and play. Mm-hmm. So okay, guess I got to do it. What's interesting is it seems like what I, my ex- personal experience with it, and this could be because of where, you know, it, it, every music scene is different or whatever, yeah. and every genre of every music scene is different. So yeah, the, and for the sure. metal, the metal kid gets a little toxic, gets a little, you know, the aggressive music, and, yeah. you know, guys are kind of acting hard, and, and, and it can, it can be kind of ego, t- it can be an ego, you know, more so than like, any any of the other genres i feel like i don't know okay i guess i haven't played in a lot of other genres but it yeah. seems like there's a little bit there might there's a high probability that there might be more ego shit flying around in like a you know tough guy fucking genre yeah maybe you know what i mean and yeah. and, and it's the, all i know really yeah you know but so there's these weird things where like the community is like different and it's like their positives and, and negatives are different right yeah so it's like what i've noticed about like the comics is like a lot of them don't like especially at the open mics they mm-hmm. don't really pay attention to the other comics a lot of them that's crazy you know what i mean which yeah. is like we're from a world where you watch the fucking band or like you get in, i i don't know the metal scene they'll fucking drag you online if you like leave if you just play your really? set and leave you know what i mean oh shit right and yeah. it's like like stay for the band support the bands kind of thing that's yeah. like how you yeah, yeah. that's how we're raised in in music you know generally yeah. um and then you you get out here and like that so that's different about comedy but what i did notice is it seems like the com- the the comedy people are more welcoming to like come on in even though it's like come on in and then it's like ha you suck you know what i mean get better yeah you know what i mean but it keep coming back you know what i mean but the, it seems so it's a, in a weird way it's like but it, it seems like it's more welcoming or it has been for me that's cool you know what i mean and i fucking love it and it's cool to do some and you hear this shit about um you know from Rogan or anybody that d- talks motivationally on mm-hmm. podcasts and stuff, yeah. but just doing something that you suck at after you've been doing this thing that you got it pretty dialed. It, can you always get better at something? Yeah, Absolutely. Of, of course, but you've, you've got it pretty dialed. And for me too, it's like the only place that I could go is like adding s- singing really to, yeah. you know, make it, which I did. I did. Yeah. I went out of my comfort zone big time on the new shit we're about to drop. So I fucking love I'll it, show man. you some if you want to hear please, it in the please car do. when we're, when we're out, when we're yeah. can't give them the exclusives on the pod, baby. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 it's not for them. Not dude. for you. Uh, no, yeah. you gotta pay for that. You gotta, shit you gotta, yeah, you gotta hit the, you gotta get, give me those Spotify pennies. You know Come on, I mean? man. You gotta make it dude, rain on me. Not even pennies, bro. Like cents on the penny. Aren't they like, I read something. They're taking it away completely from small artists or some shit like that. Or they're talking about it or something. It's all trash. Streaming's yeah. trash. But buy yeah. records. Come out to shows. Buy merch. Buy merch and buy like come out and buy a vinyl or a CD. That's how yeah. you're supporting musicians. Come to shows, man. Fucking come out. They should make Kill Tony band tees that look like metal shirts that say Kill Tony band and like metal. Font. We're f- we're figuring it out, dude. Bro, that would we're be, figuring that would it be out. Tight. I have I actually have merch. I have a t- I have a t-shirt. You have your own. I have my own. Fuck t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Buy your buy your. We'll have you plug everything. At yeah. The end, yeah. You absolutely. Tell them now. Where do yeah. you where do you get your merch at? Uh, I I have the link. Have Actually, the link the link is on my Instagram. I'll so. put it in the love it. I'll put it in the description. Of yeah, this yeah, or whatever. yeah, 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 yeah. It's but, a cool shirt that actually. Uh, 
Chris Rogers designed. Oh, so nice. it was the painting that he did on the record or on the on one of the shows. Yeah. And I, uh, my buddy took that and put it on Vectorized a shirt. Vectorized it and shit. Yeah. Put he it, put it on a so shirt sick. and it's fucking great. It's cool. That's dope. Yeah. I I love it. It's me with a fucking sombrero and a and a poncho. <laughs> And some uh, is it like Jordan cartoony? Ones. It is cartoony. That's awesome. It's dude. cool. Actually, if you go to my Instagram, you can yeah. see it. It's right there. Here, I'll do it. Or yeah. you got it, Harrison? Yeah, he pulls Instagram. Up. Yeah. But yeah, what I was saying is like just to do some shit. That's like people have been telling me that like making me think I'm pretty good at this for ten years or whatever. And it's like to do something new. It's hard. It's and hard it's, and yeah. fresh and fun and scary. And it's yeah. all the feelings that yeah. I like need. I needed it. I, you I was have in a place with music where I just like I needed it. it. I was in a stagnant place where I was like. And my band's not out here. You know yeah. what I mean? We can't jam. You know what I mean? I can that's try to tough. jam with some other guys, but that kind of, I don't know if that's like a good use of my time right now. Yeah. And so it's yeah, like, for sure. You know, um, and it's like I wasn't working on the, 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 the new music. I wasn't finishing mm -hmm. my parts. And like, I just, I, I don't know. I was kind of, we went on this big tour. We fucking crashed our van. We like almost, like, uh, we, we spun out on a snowy highway. Guys. Yeah, it's snowy highway in fucking Canada and landed in some snow. Luckily, the van was okay, and we, we finished the tour. Didn't miss a show, baby. Insane. Didn't miss a show. Fuck yeah. Pulled that shit awesome. out, you know? Good, but good. Um, But still, it was like after that, I was just like, <sighs> I got back. And I was and, and part of me, too, that was like the biggest shit we ever did. Yeah. And so it's this mixed emotions of like, and I don't know if you went through this ever. Probably not, because you're just so fucking tunnel vision. Well, but, uh, but it's yeah, like. Depending on what you're saying. But maybe. it's like. Uh, I went through like this mixed emotion where I'm like, is that it? Is that kind of the biggest, is that the biggest thing I'll ever do? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like not that we, should we hang it up? But it's like, should I be realistic and self-aware that, that, that might be the biggest opportunity that we get. And yeah. then, and then there's that, that obvious, you know, the devil and angel kind of thing. There's the other side where it's like, no, don't be a bitch. Like this is the, the we're just getting started, baby. You know what I mean? And so that's the, that's the avenue you got to go down. But I, I couldn't help, but just kind of after all that. Yeah. And then like, you know, just feeling kind of stagnant. And then, um, and then the comedy thing, I've picked it up in December and it was just like, I don't know. It, it, and I, I started doing the mics more after I got back from that tour. And it yeah. was like, that made me, I was like, Oh cool. Like we're fucking, you know, learning how to walk with these new legs, you know, or something. It felt, it felt, it just felt so different. Yeah. Driving a different kind of vehicle, you know what I mean? 100%. And, uh, and that made me go like, I had so much fun with that and doing the podcast and I was like, Oh, I want to listen. I'm going to listen to some old music. I'm going to yeah. get back in the yeah. music. And dude, yeah. I started listening to that old, like incubus audio slave sound. Chris Cornell. I was trying to get vocal yeah. influence I from, love the, it. from the shit that I grew up corn, the yeah. shit that I grew up listening to, Fucking you know, new metal, new metal dude. baby. It's coming back. Creed's on tour, bro. bro. It's, it's all coming back. Uh, with her, let her phone. Dude, it's fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, then it, I started listening to that music, and I had a moment where I was like, "Oh, this is there is something going on in me yeah. right now." And so I called like one of my best friends who now lives in Arizona. He's from Portland too, okay. and he's like, w he's like basically part of our band. We shared, I love we it. shared Garrett for a long time with it, between our bands and stuff. Uh -huh. He's he's a rapper now that's like has millions of streams now. Fucking awesome. It's in a rap group called Grim Salvo. They're like Suicide Boys, but better. Oh shit! Yeah, it's really. I'll show them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. peep that shit if you like. Fucking because he's like super. Shit, he's dude. super musical too. So his singing, like, you know, th Alice and Chainsy kind of vocals, and that's kind of what I wanted to. If I was gonna add cleans into fucking metal music, yeah, I didn't want it to be like the typical like force to sounding. You okay. know, like like a lot of bands will like sell out. People say, you know okay. what I mean. I don't really believe in that, but it's like. Like a lot of bands will like try to put cleans in and it just sounds like they tried to put cleans in their heavy music. Right. Yeah. And so I wanted to do something that was more true to me and yeah. what I like. So I was like, what do I like? Right. Cool. Like Alice in Chains, like old, like grungy, like yeah. dark, you know what I mean? And like, and singing in my range and not trying to do like the whiny high pitch kind of metal, metal core screaming. I don't know how versed you are. with. Well, that I was just going to, I was just about to ask you. So cleans meaning like clean the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Like so not, not screaming. Yeah. So, so like adding in, like it's mostly screaming, but then adding in like part chorus parts where yeah. i'm singing like yeah like, like singing yeah, actually cool. singing. yeah because uh, for I the last 10 years it was just you know <clears throat> you know yeah. that kind of guttural shit you yeah. know and uh and so i called him right away and i was like dude i don't know what's going on with me right now but i'm listening to all this old shit and i feel like so inspired like i ha i have can you come out here like next week and we need yeah. we need to finish this music now like while i'm on this Fuck yeah, fucking dude. high yeah and he came out here and we did we did five songs in three days or five songs in four days. Fuck yeah, dude. Stayed in here. We did it at this table. You did? We did, yeah. We just laptopped it and fucking did it with one of these mics and yeah. just ripped it for, and we stayed up, you know, like staying up late, like the yeah. fun shit, like delirious. Like we got it. 
finish this part before we go home. Like that's it's honestly like that the grind. funnest. It's <sighs> you're you're in that that uh, kind of loopy state, and now all like whatever your thoughts, they're not battling you; they're helping you. Yeah. So you're in you're in a creative, uh, in a creative point where like now it. it because w- during the during days, I I find like I pr- I practice really well at night because it's not I'm not judging myself as much. And when you create and you you're you're in a, a studio session, most of my sessions that have been really good are been like I'm super tired. Because at that yeah. point you don't care. You're not you're not thinking like oh I have to nail this take. It's just like I'm just gonna play this music. You're a little bit more creative, so you're thinking differently because of the mm-hmm. deliriousness of the whole thing. And it just feels better. That's like where the magic starts. One hundred, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. So when you're saying you're staying up super late and doing all this shit, I was like, I I connect with that a yeah. lot. Yeah. And we've always had a problem too with like that was the most I've ever cranked out songs. Like because really? I only had him here for a couple of days, couple of days, and I yeah. we needed to get him done, and it was I I expected that he was gonna do a lot more like. You know, like this is the first time with cleans. Like I'm gonna need some help here. I don't know what I'm doing. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh-huh. And uh, and it was cool because he basically just kind of like guided my my ideas. Added some. I added some. Like what if we did this? You yeah. know what I mean? But he was kind of letting me like he wanted me to kind of like lead and do it. You know what I, I mean? Love to it. make it mine. You know yeah. what I mean? Still. And it yeah, was just like of course. It was so cool to like work with the old homie like that and yeah. just and do because we always usually kind of do things pretty remote even when we lived together in, in Oregon together it was, it like was always like like here's the program drums for now you know what I mean yeah. and then um, and like w- basically like the demo track right yeah and yeah. then they'll write it and send it to me and then I'll take way too long on it to like <laughs> figure out my shit because I I don't know I would always overthink stuff you know and like and yeah I don't know it was just it what happened in this room when we recorded the new bystander shit is like it was it was magic and so i, I want to we're going to do it like that from now on whether it's like the guys coming mm-hmm. i think the next stuff i want like at least one or two of the guys to come here, here and and do write some shit with me and yeah. the next level of that would be like actually writing an entire thing like within five days like an entire butts record to nuts you know what i mean yeah like like just write write it all like it all. Fr- from start to finish like yeah, in, dude. in a in a setting we've never really been able to do that or done we've never really tried probably uh-huh. but there's the you know life gets in the way we're just like you know kind of <laughs> yeah. we're we're lazy like to party you know what i mean and so yeah. it's just kind of like it, it's just every band has their own methods of like making music you know and yeah. we we just kind of always were took us just took us a long time to herd the cats you know and like wrangle everything get all the parts done and yeah I want to i'm trying to get more after that last experience like i want to get more streamlined with with recording music i love it i mean because i love it that like you said that magic happens when you're all together and it's late and you've been it's like we need more of those moments yes you know and you are the only ones that can put that together yeah like specifically if you like recording at night get everybody in a room everybody's fucking delirious and that's where the creativity is happens because you're not you're not thinking you're not overthinking everything right the overthinking is is the worst thing to do in the studio or when you're creating music yeah if the part fits and you like it fucking go through it yeah go with it man exactly yeah that's why prince put out so much music bro he, oh, did, he wasn't was so good. he he's my he's my favorite musician of all i wish time. we wouldn't have lost prince man fuck fentanyl that's it's just, tough it's, we lost tom petty yeah we lost prince yeah so there's many. been a, there's been a couple of them that have been pretty heavy yeah yeah for sure um going back to some like kill tony questions i guess like uh you guys how do you what is like the communication because i feel like if you're if you're really nerdy and and you like the show and you've Mm -hmm. been watching it everybody notices that you guys talk to each other yeah yeah and so i feel like i'm i'm curious like what you guys are saying to each other and like or like and what how do you how do you guys communicate when you're like trying to slide in and out of these things you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and play all these different songs yeah so now just recently maybe a month or two no, a little bit over a month. So probably like two or three months ago, we added talkback mics and in ears, so that way we. So can, that's a new thing. That's a new thing. Okay. Yeah, that's like since the like big show, probably the. We had it. We we had it specifically for the big show because we were all like can't hear each other. Right? Well, we were also far far apart. Oh, yeah. You know. Okay. So they gave they gave Matt uh, Matt a talkback mic for that one. I didn't have a talkback on that one, uh, but he was kind of like, "Hey, we should do this. We should do this. Boom, boom, boom. We start mm-hmm. playing." Because we were the stage is so big. I was on a riser. D was right next to me. Paul was on the opposite side, and then uh, Matt and John were behind the panel, 
and at ACL that stage is really wide, so mm-hmm. there wasn't there was no way we were. Hey, uh, four four. Uh, you're just like screaming at each other. Yeah, it dude, wouldn't have worked. And then also having having monitors on that stage would have been insane. Crowd it, roaring, dude. Yeah, like you can't hear shit. You can't. You can't. And for us, we need to be able to communicate. So at the at the mothership now, we have ears. Matt and John have a talk back, and I have a talk back, and it's it's cool to you know, be able to actually talk to each other. Yeah. Before that, we were texting each other, be like, hey, look at your phone. I think we should play this song. No way. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's or, fucking dude, crazy. The, or one at one point, like, Paul was in the middle of me because he used to be on the outside of me where the ramp is to go to the corner of the club. And I would be able to see them. But the first time they put Paul on the inside, I mean, John and I had so much miscommunication that night. I couldn't see him. We He wasn't able to communicate. And, like, it just that night was kind of rough because I was like, fuck, I can't see you. I can I can barely hear you. You mm-hmm. know, we still had monitors, so it didn't work right. So once we added the mics and the ears, it was like, yo, we're fucking good. Now. It was like tightening up an already tight machine. Yeah. Yeah. You guys just got even tighter. On yeah, that absolutely. Then. OK. And then now that we can talk to each other like D's and and and. Matt can now lead us through songs or like if they have an idea like the other night uh uh John and Matt were out so we had this dude Carter Arrington incredible musician guitar player uh but I I had the talk back that night so uh when we when we tell each other like what songs we're going to play this dude came up which I actually think you had him on the podcast recently um ah oh, fuck what's his name you just po- you just posted a Zach Black no, it wasn't Zach. Oh, Tim Warner. Yes, Tim Warner. Yeah. So Tim was on the podcast last week, and he came up and he looked. He was dressed like Joe Pesci from Home yeah, Alone. Yeah, yeah. Were you there? You weren't there. For no, 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 I watched it. Okay, I just, okay. I just, so I just watched it. Yeah, he was dressed like Joe Pesci, yeah. and then we played the Home Alone thing. I was like, Hey, yeah. we're gonna play the Home yeah, yeah. Alone uh, uh, theme song. And so, like shit, like that. If somebody says and y'all something, y'all already know. Like that's such an obscure theme song. I don't fucking know how that. You shit don't? Goes. No, because I'm. I I never really watched the movie, dude. I, I mean, I, I watched it like once when I was a kid, a long time okay. ago. Okay, but every time you're on an airplane now, think of uh, there's this thing. It's like a bell that happens every time when you, uh, uh, when they they put the on seat the, the seatbelt sign. Yeah, but it goes ding ding. So that yeah. that uh free that uh, uh note those melody, two notes you want to call is that. the beginning melody of the, of the Home Alone thing song. Ding, 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 okay. Ding, 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 it's a little It's yeah, one hundred percent. Oh, okay. Maybe I maybe I do remember. Everybody yeah. knows it. Okay. Everybody knows okay. it. Home Alone is fucking a cult classic. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. just, it's everybody knows it. So when we did it, like every like. Uh, Paul actually played it, and I was like about to tell him, I was like, "No, we're playing that song." Paul, do it again once he, once he, uh, I'm talking into the mic, like, yeah. once he's done, we're gonna play that song. And he yeah. went into it. We all went into Blue it. Blue Tony's mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He started. He's <laughs> yeah. like the Home Alone theme song. What the fuck? You know. <laughs> so so like, we all have certain times where like, hey, we should do this because Tony said this, or the comedian said that, or yeah. this or this. So know? that's what you guys are kind of saying. Yeah, to each pretty other. much. That's so tight. And then every now and then, when like. <laughs> When a comedian comes up and just bombs, we'll be like, "Dude, holy shit! That was like yeah. that's crazy." And you'll say some, you'll you'll say we'll some fu- shit to each other. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Back and forth. little commentary. Yeah, for us, bro. That's in the that's back. like that would be the bonus features, dude. If, if they still, if we still did DVDs, the yeah. the KT bonus features <laughs> would be the commentary from the band. Like, from man, us. this guy sucks, <laughs> or whatever. Or like, <laughs> or like, uh. <laughs> Like, well, if, if a guest or somebody's, like, going crazy tonight, we'll be like, man, dude, this dude's on one tonight. Yeah. And like, to, uh, sometimes Tony gets mad for people over talking, like, talking uh-huh. over him, and we'll be like, yep, you deserve that one. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah like, exactly. Shit like that. You know what he I'm saying? little quips. In, yeah. yeah, just it's for It's literally a, just com- the band commentary. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, it is. Because I think people probably wonder what y'all are saying to each other sometimes. Oh, dude, I, I think I've ac- actually had people DM me about like yo have you seen this comment like we we want to we we just want a podcast listening to what the band's telling yeah, each other. yeah 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 that's it, that would be so funny yeah it's not you know it's nothing crazy no but, but it's, it's just, pretty funny it's for that us. it's that extra it's that extra shit you know yeah you know, yeah for are, sure people are people get obsessed with things you know like dude like we were talking with music and stand up whatever it yeah. is you know podcasting you get obsessed with watching your favorite show and you're like dude what are they saying yeah i want to know 
I dude, need to with one hundred percent, and with Kill Tony, with Kill Tony, we have the most amazing fans, man. So it's like people are it like pretty crazy. They're world. nerdy about the it, show. They are, yeah, yeah. To a to a negative point, sometimes, right? Some of them get a little. Some I try. Of them get I don't a toxic. I don't read the comments for that very reason. No, I don't. You I can't you know. Read no, I don't. I I try not to. I don't even have notifications on on my IG. Yeah, I, I so like that off. for people who have DM me and I haven't message back it's because i sometimes i just don't fucking read it it's You're hard out here doing the work bro. i, you don't have I time want to, to play around in your dms <laughs> <laughs> you're you're out here doing the work bro uh i play around in my dms yeah. every night <laughs> 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 yeah it's not you when know. duty calls you play yeah around. right uh yeah. but yeah yeah so it's it's really cool to to have people come and like they'll they'll send something nice or, or like people will send me pictures of the comments and be like yo that was that was fucking cool. The band killed it tonight. Yeah. There was one episode where where Matt it was just Matt and I because D had a gig, double booked himself, and John was on tour, and it was just me and Matt. This was before Paul had joined, and we, Matt and I just played Rage Against the Machine songs all mm -hmm. night. And when he <laughs> yeah. said the Rage thing, oh, I was yeah. like, oh fuck, I remember that yeah. episode. And all that's all we did. Dana, Dana. Dude, yeah. and fucking people were like, fuck yes, yeah, Rage, yeah. another one, another yeah, one, yeah. Rage, Rage. And I was like, dude, fucking man, we yeah. killed this shit. That's yeah, we cool. Were, we were just like, you're like, we were just trying to put a band aid on this. One hundred percent. It's like what everyone loved it. One hundred percent. That's awesome. And like Matt, we we're like, dude, what the fuck can we do? Matt Mueling can... is so good. I gotta he, get him in here too. Hopefully he'll. One hundred percent. He'd love to. Me. Really? He would love to. All right. That'd yeah, cool. he would love to. Matt. And, Matt, I want to talk. He is a very intelligent, interesting person. Yeah. knows so much about music life and he's another one that like likes to work out like we're we're workout you know we, yeah. we send each I other shit come, i want to work out too man fucking I'm come to, to on it i think man. the 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 thing is you get like you get your friends kind of become sometimes your your you know like they not hold you back but it's like you, you do different things with different friends right yeah, so some, sure. sometimes you got your party friends and or whatever and then it's like I don't I don't I have like a couple friends that want to they're, they're kind of on my saying like oh we need to get in the gym one yeah. of my best friends here lives in the same apartment building with me as me oh now. sick and so he's always like let's go to the gym let's go to the gym at so the it's apartment. like that helps a lot yeah 100%. you know what I mean and so it's like I'm like anyone that works out like Zach Black you know do you know Zach Black? I don't think I know Zach. he's he's he works at Vulcan he's been okay. on Kill Tone he's a comic and oh, fuck does yeah, shows man. around yeah um but uh, Zach Black was the guy who Tony was like, uh, he p got pulled on one of the last couple episodes at, uh, at Vulcan. He, yeah. And yeah. it's a it's a stage name, basically. And he right, called him right. out and he was like, get his ID. Do you remember that? I don't Fuck, know. Do he was I like, get his ID. And he, somebody got pulled, somehow got his ID yeah. and they put him on blast for it. But Fuck, I don't remember that <laughs> it was one. It's fucked up. Yeah. They did, my, they did my guy dirty. No, That's no, funny, no I'm just actually. kidding. It's, what's it was funny. It was what's funny. his full I don't name? even know. I forget. Ah, I forget. He doesn't even know his full no, no, name. No, 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 no. I just, because I respect the stage name. He's, oh, like, he's Zach yeah. Black for me. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's Zach Black. No, no. Shout out to Zach. I'm yeah. Zach, no, Zach but, Black. You are Zach Black. You are. Yeah. You are. Let it be no, let there be no question. Yeah. No, but yeah, it's like, uh, oh, fuck, I don't remember where I was going with that. That's all right. That's okay. That's okay. What's up? Oh, shit. You pulled the merch up. Yeah. That's it. That's it right there. Pull the merch up. And hopefully soon. That is so dope. Yeah, so Tour Life is, uh, is a company that uh, my buddy Josh Applebaum ha has. And then also John Dees is also involved with Josh. Josh Applebaum. For, yeah, for does Tour Life. In, does he live in Chicago? He, he lives in fucking Minnesota. Really? I mean Minnesota in Wisconsin, oh, okay. which uh, which is uh, Sam Applebaum is the drummer of a band called Vale Maya. He's a okay. friend of mine. I wonder if he has a brother. I forget his name. No, nah, I don't think yeah. it, maybe it must maybe be maybe it's a popular second nickname. second cousin. And he's from Chicago, so maybe you never know. Midwest, yeah, maybe. Area. Yeah, that's funny. That's an awesome shirt. I'm gonna need to buy one of these, dude. Fucking, I want one. Yeah, man. I'm gonna buy one. Yeah. Well, actually, so Josh uh, Josh took that this picture. Thing? So that's the tour life. That so that's my signature on top. Then that's the collaboration with Tour Life, his company. Okay. Yeah, and you can you can see that's that's Chris Ro Ro Chris Rogers did that. Look at the fucking Mexican flag, Nino <laughs> Poncho. So sick. My hat, the fu like. What was the hat all about? Yeah, everybody everybody asks me that all the time. It's just it's something that I that I. It's your character. Your it thing. is now. Yeah. It is now. So uh, after after going through a, like, I was about to get I was gonna get married this year in September. My ex fiance and I split, and I we were both you know we were going through some tough shit right after she moved out, or when when she was about to move out. I just needed to go spend time with my friends, and Gary, John, Josh, and the whole Gary crew was playing Jazz Fest, 
so I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go hang with my buddies all re- all weekend. I've never been to Jazz Fest. John was like, come out. We'll get you all the passes, whatever. And Josh was like, dude, come with me. Come stay with my pops and I. We're just going to hang. And I told my dad, I was like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out to New Orleans. And he goes, are you going by yourself? And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go hang with my friends. He goes, nah, I'll go with you. He had never been to Jazz, Be- Jazz Fest before. So I was like, fuck it. Let's take a trip out there. He rented a car, came up, picked me up, and then we went, we went, uh, we drove from Austin to New Orleans, hung out. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. We got there on Saturday. It took us, dude, check this. It took us 10 hours to get to New Orleans because of a fucking crash. And it's like a seven hour drive from here. It's It's supposed to be, right? It's seven. seven. Yeah, Yeah. six and a half, seven, depending on how fast you drive. But on I-10, there's a certain section of I-10 outside of Houston that it's only one way and then one, so it's like only one way's in and out. So if you if you get stuck on I-10 through traffic and construction, you are fucked. Yeah. And that's what happened that day. Houston's such a bitch to drive through. Dude. And this was already post we, we were already past Houston. It was they're just <laughs> it fucking sucked. Anyway, so we get there, we meet Josh, his dad and and uh Dee's and we all have dinner that night and it's like, "All right, cool. We're going to go out and see some New Orleans fucking mute like cuz yeah. it's jazz fest. So shows are happening until 5 yeah. in the morning." It's like one of the biggest things in the nation. 100%. One of the busy, biggest music music yeah, events gatherings the like all the best musicians that are like fucking block parties musicians. and shows Everywhere. going on in the street. Every venue, yeah. every venue is booked from fucking afternoon all the way to five in the morning. It's just crazy, yeah. craziness. Stan Moore, Eric Krasno, Nikki Glasby, like all like the guys from Lettuce, Adam Deitch, like all these musicians are playing four sets in a day. So we get there on Saturday, we go have dinner with these guys, and then we decide like. Uh, John talks to Eric and we're we're trying to get on like one of the shows and we go to one of the shows and it, it turns out not to be that fun. So we're leaving the next day right after Gary plays. My dad and I have to get back because it's a Sunday. I got to be back for Kill Tony. So we just ended up going. We go home. The next day we wake up, we go to Jazz Fest and we're having a fucking blast. My dad's never been to New Orleans. Take him to a couple fucking restaurants. We go to Jazz Fest with Josh and his dad. I'm walking around the areas. We're taking it all in. Like, mm-hmm. it's fucking experience. Like, Josh and his dad, me and my pops, and we're just enjoying the whole fucking thing. It's father-son hang, dude. dude. For bo- yeah, for both of us. What it was, a sick hang. It was so fucking fun. It was what I needed at the time, and yeah. he knew it. To, like, reinvigorate your, yeah, dude. your passion. My, you went yeah. through a little sh- stagnant sh- slump, like I was talking about. And it, about wasn't, it wasn't even just, like, it wasn't a slump in music. It was a slump in life. My heart was, like, yeah. it, you know, it was, a, it was a point where her and I just, it, it just wasn't going to work at that point. Funny, like we're still friends. We're still yeah. best friends. It's but awesome. But to... at that one point in life, I needed to go. Yeah. And my dad was like, "Fucking, I'm on this road with you. Let's fucking do it." Yeah. That's so. So sweet. we go. We're having a fucking blast. John ends up walking off by himself. Goes and does his thing, and we're we're hanging out backstage. Gary's there. Fucking, uh, everybody's there hanging out. John comes back with these two big fucking rings or like uh like bracelets, cool looking fucking bracelets. He. <laughs> Look like Thor with just big old things. He's yeah. like, bro, where the fuck did you get that? He goes, yeah, I found this fucking uh, stand. Vendor. This, yeah, this vendor, this African dude makes this jewelry and shit. And I was like, yo, take us there. I want to get something. Yeah. So Josh and he takes Josh and I back to this whole thing. And it's this big fucking vendor thing. It's one guy, that Africa dude, has a bunch of jewelry, hats. Dope a- ass. Any, anything, random shit. Dude, a- like weird trinkets of all the shit that he's made. And I walk up and I was like, man, what the fuck am I going to get? Josh and Josh and uh, D's are looking at rings and other shit. And I find the bead necklace, which you can see on this mm-hmm. thing. I found that first. And I was like, fuck yeah, yeah that's I'm getting that. So I get it and I put it on. I was like, all right, cool. I dig this. And I look to my right and this lady picks up that hat. She picks it up, puts it on. She goes, nah. I remember <laughs> she goes, nah. <laughs> <laughs> not for no, me. <laughs> no, she didn't even have to look at herself. She just puts it on and goes, nah, not for me. that's not it. She takes it off and I go, excuse me, are you putting that back? And I was like, can I, can I try it on? Yeah. I take it and she's, she's staring at me in my face. I take it. I put it on and I put the little, cause it comes with a little thing. I put mm. it on my face and she looks at, we look at each other dead in the eyes and she goes, that's you. <laughs> That's you. Yes. She doesn't even know me. Yeah. She has no fucking She's clue like, who I am. It's very you, dude. It's very you. And I she go, says your name. She's like, it's <laughs> very like, you, Michael Gonzalez. You're holy like, holy 
fuck? Yeah, who are you? Who is this lady? Yeah, and then she just, she, I turn around, she turn, I turn back around, she's just fucking disappeared. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like when you buy, like, the, whatever, the, the monkey's paw at, yes. the, at the, like, at the sketchy uh, trinket shop, and it's like curses you. He had he had all the, like little things like that there. That's funny. But it was so so. She tells me that, and I go, you know what? This is fucking me. Yes. And I took I took out my phone. I took a picture, and I was like, yo, this is my shit now, yes. dude. And I wore it the it's your rest of the day. Now. I walked back, and I <laughs> I walked back. My dad goes, what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> I had glasses on. I had my, I had that hat, and I had the You're fucking beads. He goes, "What the fuck are you wearing?" I go, "Vibing." This is my new look. Yeah, Ain't the, nobody can fucking stop me. The now. random lady at the stand said it was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's me now. Yeah, this is me. One hundred percent. He was like, "All right, well, you did the, you did achieve your dreams with the drums. You know what you're doing. So I'm just gonna go with it. That is you, son. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I, I wore it. it for the rest of the fucking day, and I wore it driving home. I bet that thing smells like shit now. It actually doesn't. <laughs> It actually What's it doesn't. made out of? It's made of straw. Oh, it's a straw hat. Yeah, but it's it's like people people were like, "Yo, is that from like the Philippines or is that Mongolian?" Like you look cuz I'm Mexican, so when I wear it, I look like I'm like Asian or Mongolian or something like right. that. It looks but like Raiden's hat from Mortal Kombat. It kind of does. You know what I'm talking about? It kind of does. It it's a little Yeah, it's not exactly yeah. straight. It look actually looks more like a samurai helmet. Almost, yeah, people think right? that too. Yeah. yeah people think that too that's but anyways that's the shirt. story and, and i just never took it off and i send my i send my sisters uh a picture because we have a my dad my mom we have a group we have a group uh group chat together and i go this is fucking me now yeah <laughs> and it's the same thing yeah. like some lady said it was me so it is fucking me it dude. gave you superpowers and all dude. of them were like you're a fucking idiot you're <laughs> like you're dumb you're dumb and i wore it on the first show See, uh, dude, it is. It, it kind of looks. Kind of is. Yeah, see how that one goes. It's just yeah, it's a point. Just straight down. Yeah. yeah. I um, <laughs> there's a uh, when I was on tour, I played a, a music festival in San Diego, and one of the stagehands, she she was a black girl, had a hat that looked exactly exactly like mine, Whoa. and I walked up to her and I go, I have a hat like that, and she goes, no, you What do you? Yeah, what are you talking about? No, you don't. And I showed her a picture, and she goes. Holy shit, that's <laughs> fucking awesome. Where yeah. did you get that? And I told her the whole story. It's like a type of African hat. It's yes, dude. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I I like can't a traditional. She, well, she told me what she told me the name of the hat and I was like, "Oh, that's what it's called." But I can't fucking remember what oh, it was. Damn. Yeah. But she was so she was so cool. She's like, "That's fucking awesome. I've never met anybody else who has a hat like me." It's a cool hat. Dude. Yeah. I'm trying to take more fashion risks. Uh, that's why I'm wearing a yellow shirt today. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. It all people make well, not people, but the people that are close to me. I've never been afraid of like wearing the shit that I want to wear. Mm -hmm. I just it is what it is. I don't give a I'm fuck. I'm just bad at like dressing myself. And dude, I'm I'm bad at spending money on clothes. Like I don't spend money on clothes. I fucking I I would rather spend 100 bucks on dinner than yeah. 40 bucks on a shirt. Oh dude, one food right? means food means way more food means way more and the to me. The experience you get when you're eating with people and you're balling out on a dinner and you all throw 100 down on a yeah. $600 tab, you dude, know or whatever. It's like yes. I'd rather spend money on food than shoes. I just finally forced myself to I went to Ross and bought like six pairs of shoes. And ah, it's funny. I went to Ross. My boy, yeah, my boy went to Ross. <laughs> dressing for less out here, son. Dude, for you real. You know, no, but I six I, pairs I, is dude, hey, dressing look. for less. Fire. You got those at Ross? Ross. What the f That's tight. Ross. Like put them on screen. What? Put them on camera. Yeah, Ross, he's like, baby. Well, put that camera on me, boy. Look, I got shoot. I'm the guy with the shoes for once, you know? Good for you, no, man. No, but it feels good. You How much did you get those for? I think it was like 30 bucks. Bro. Dude, 30 okay. 40 bucks and Vans are normally like the 100 bucks. The low tops are like 70. Yeah. Right, at the Vans store. It, I went to the Vans when I, uh They're probably fake, I don't know. The last time I was in <laughs> Chicago, I went to a Vans store I was like, dude, fucking Dave Grohl wears Vans, Josh Freeze wears Vans. Um, I got to get fucking Vans, dude. So I did. <laughs> I was on tour. I was like, I'm in Chicago, I'm on a day off. I'm going to go fucking get some vans and i did and i put some on and i go fuck yeah. I, yeah I channeled that one lady goes that's you hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. these shoes are me these dude. Shoes are me. yeah so i put them on i was like i fucking walked out how much are these those are 100 bucks <sighs> dude what yeah For vans yeah okay whatever Aren't i want to be like dave growing cheap G beater shoes like come yeah. on yeah yeah, well, I, t I, I try to, I'm a sneakerhead, so I try to oh, take care are? of okay. my shoes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. If, so if I'm going to spend money on anything clothing related, it's shoes. Shoes. Yeah. shoes. You're just, Absolutely. You're black, Sneakers. black hoodie, blue jeans, but some banging shoes. Right? I don't even really wear jeans. Like, yeah. if I, if. I if, just started wearing jeans again. Really? Yeah, just, yeah. I don't know why. Well, first of all, it's hot as fuck here. Dude. I don't know how you're going to wear jeans nine months out of the year. Cut off shirts and fucking shorts same, dude. or my, like. My nips are out half the, half the year. My nips, yeah. my nips are hanging out of my side of my cutoff yeah. half the year. 
But it is know, what it you is. Gotta be nips out out here. I love it, dude. Yeah. What I'm do you? A, what kind of shoes are you rocking? What are, what's the sneaker today? Dude, what's the sneaker flex today? Prototypes, bro. These are the Jordan One prototypes. Okay. Yeah. Explain to explain to me like a grandmother. Like I'm like, those are nice shoes, honey. Why are they so expensive? You well, know they're what so I mean? expensive like, because of you know Michael Jordan. That's the right. only reason why. If right. he if he didn't have you know if he didn't design these, I don't think these. I would get. Be. Oh, so he designed. Well, are, I guess he didn't design them. Okay. The guy. I, I, have you seen the movie Air? Yeah. Okay. I just watched that. That's cool. Watch that movie. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna do a no, 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 good no. job. Yeah. Watch that movie. It shows you how he did. That's it. cool. Anyways, these are called the prototypes because if you see this line right here, mm -hmm. if you put it on camera, this line you can cut the top of the shoe to make it high top to low top. Oh. The only thing you can't do is fucking put it back. So I don't right. think that's a that's a nobody does that. No, no, no. I I, th I just think that like I was in Chicago. I bought these in Chicago for three hundred bucks, and they would just came out at the time. And I was like, "Yo, this colorway is fucking sick." Yeah, it has the it has you an orange what? highlight. They they glow in the dark. The sides give give off Wildberry Pop Tarts '90s vibes. Oh, my you know God. what I'm talking about? Like I that do. teal, like yeah, the, the cup, yes, you know, the dude. cups. Yeah, yeah, the I 90s know exactly cups. what you're talking about. Yeah, that about. like weird swirl, yeah. purple, and like the yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never. I just, dude, it's crazy. Like Ridley's the same way with the shoes, dude. You know what I mean? M Mike and I talk about shoes every time I see him, and he always comes up fucking flossing on everybody. Oh, You're he's like, what the? So fuck, flossed dude? up, yeah. dude. Yeah, he's yeah. he knows it too. No, yeah, and we and we it's both all premeditated. Know it. Yes. Yeah. 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 That boy leaves the house fresh. As I can love be. it. I he, love it. So I we're banking episodes of his podcast in here. I know. He told and me. He, you got to do his. I now that you know where where the spot. Well, is he at. he actually do his. he told me about you and was like, "Yo, my buddy's got a podcast. I think I'm starting mine and all this shit." Yeah, I was like, hell yeah, dude. Fuck, I, fuck yeah. I I fell in love with that guy. I love that guy, dude. He's Mike, amazing. Mike is I one of the him. Mike is one of the most genuine people, and he's incredibly like talented as a. He's comedian. He's next up. Yeah, I I do think yeah. so. He's his he's got a sharp fucking <sighs> yeah, brain too. That's great. But when I first met him, I was like, yo, there's something different about you, man. Mm -hmm. Like just as a human too. Yeah. Like he's a good fucking dude. And I met his wife too. She's awesome. Like, I don't think I've really met her yet. She but. he he uh he brought her to a show one time and mm -hmm. kind of like worked in in the same uh while we were setting up and yeah. shit like that. Like he's a fucking They're homie. incredible human beings. Yeah. I love those dudes. I remember I told him this story too. Uh we were like uh I, I was going through a phase of listening to the Kill Tonys where I was like, I found the podcast and then I like, you know, was catching up on stuff and yeah. I was doing DoorDash. And this was like before I even moved here. Okay. And before he moved here, I think he was just like visiting at and got on Kill Tony or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was listening and I was just like, dude, this guy, I didn't even see what he looked like, but you know, he talks about how he looks in his stand up. So I was just yeah. kind of, I was driving and listening to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is like, I don't really do that anymore with, with Kill Tony. I usually watch it. But yeah. uh, I was going through his phase where I was listening to it and I was just like, dude, this guy sounds like the sickest hang. He is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I got out here and, and ended up meeting him and I was just like, dude, this guy is. We're homies. Yeah. yeah it's I fucking, fucking love it. It's weird how the world works, man. This dude, it is. This place is magical. It brings people together. Yeah. And shit. It's cool. Yeah. I'm sure there's people out here, you know, talking shit. Oh, you know, you hear there's some shit about every place, you know, but, but man, you got to be out here. Wait to, until you, gotta, you get here. Yeah. You got to be out here to feel a lot it. Of, a lot of people talk shit and never been here. Yeah. Or they like can't move their situation to get, they can't, they can't get yeah. here. So they're like. They kind of want to be here, yeah. and so they're like, "Fuck that place." I, I feel bad. I feel bad for situations like that because you too. know it sucks. Because yeah. Cause this is a great place, and it sucks that you can't move here. But don't be, don't be upset about I it. I was just so depressed come. before I moved here. Like, really? I was just so done with Portland. It's just like a small. It's it's a smaller city, yeah. and I was just like, I had done. It's like it was like a video game where like I beat the main quest, and I was just going around fucking like pick, <laughs> picking flowers, you know, <laughs> or like doing the side gather seven fruits. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like I was just going around yeah. doing the bullshit fuck and man. i was like and i was like man i was just you know i miss my friends and family but it's like this is no day is boring out here there's like so yeah. much fun shit going on and, all the time man and if if, the if there's nothing going on then you can go do a mic or you can go you know go out to a bar and catch some fucking dude like you shredding at a you know at yeah. a sick bar show you know what i mean yeah. or like it's just one of the high caliber musicians it's just such a fun entertaining place yeah dude and if you like the outdoors too there's so much shit to there do. there's a lot of hikes there's a lot of like natural spring pools and if there if you like to uh, uh camp 
Uh-huh. There, dude, if you go 45 to an hour outside the city, yeah. man, there's. I need you to hit me with some spots because we want to yeah. go camping and yeah. like we brought all, we moved all of our camping shit because yeah. Oregon's big camping too. You know it's what huge. I mean? So it's like anything in the Pacific but, Northwest. But it's like rainy a lot, and so it's not yeah. always optimum. You know, out there. Yeah, they'll call you yeah. a bitch if you don't just camp in that. But it's like you don't want to camp, get your shit all wet and fucking. Yeah. You know what I mean? It and takes like, a little extra fucking work. Yeah, and it's just not as like fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I, I need to get out and do some more uh, hiking shit. I've been, yeah. I've been a city boy since I moved here. Just I feel that. It, turning up and and doing city shit but you've been you've been partying around I've been, no i mean i think i spent the first like couple months here because dude we moved here and like our shit was supposed to get i shipped like all my i moved i, I didn't want to get a u-haul i just shipped my stuff here like in a in a container no those are like way way more expensive yeah those pods and so i paid the sketchy place to fucking like <laughs> they're all sketchy i read reviews for like like weeks and they're all like half fuck the reviews that. look fake and then the other half is split between people saying fuck this place and this place was great yeah yeah. And so it's like it, they all look the exact same and they're all like third partied out with like different movers. Yeah, and so, that. dude, I'm from uh, my, they picked my shit up in Portland mm-hmm. and they moved it an, like an hour and a half north to Tacoma. And it sat there for two months almost. What? Like the f- a month while you were half. here? Yeah, it was supposed to be here the day after I got here. So everything was planned perfectly. And I called them and they're like, oh, yeah, that's your first available delivery date. We have up to legally what we have fuck? up to 60 days to give you 90 days to give you your shit. Three months. I think it was 90 days. Bro. What the fuck? And they did take the exact time, <laughs> like almost the ex- almost all of that time. Uh, and so it's some scam. That, surprisingly, not a single thing was missing. A, right. A plate was broken. So, yeah. you know, I can't be too m- bummed about it. But anyway, I because of that, we well, were just, just like, annoying. yeah, yeah. And we didn't have any of our shit. So we were just like, you know. Know, fuck being at home like mm-hmm. let's just go out and explore so yeah. we spent like the first month or so two months here just like me and my girl just like exploring around cool. you know what i mean but uh so yeah but now i'm kind of like now that i've been here for a while yeah. i've been to been to been around and partied i'm like i want to like you know now we gotta branch out lock well we no we gotta we gotta we gotta hunker down oh you oh, know what okay. i mean and like okay. and like work on doing yeah. shit like this and like you know, working on working on photography work and getting the business, you know, Fuck yeah, going dude. in business, you know, business is crushing. Love the, it. First year was crazy. So it's going to be it's going to be even better this year. I'm How still, long have you been here? I've been here since July of last year. Oh, cool. So yeah. like a year and a half. Almost yeah. A year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. So I think in a short time, I've, I've, I've had a lot of fun. I've met a lot of cool people and yeah. been able to fucking do this. Do this. And, you know, it's kind of hard keeping like. You know, you kind of have to take a like a limb and like reach out like I did to you. I'm you know glad what I mean? you did. Dude. I am too, yeah. dude. I really haven't. I'm having Thanks, a great brother. time talking to you. Dude, Fuck yeah, honestly. me too. Hopefully, we can hang out again. You know, no, absolutely. Have we you for- back on another time? I like to try to get people back on I every six months, year, see what see what they're doing. You yeah, know what man. I mean. But uh, but yeah, man, it's it's just it's cool that like you most people you're like, hey, like I'm doing this thing as long as you're like genuine about it, you know, mm-hmm. they'll be like, yeah, sure. You know, it's like I knew I had to move to I started the podcast in Oregon, like in my living room. Oh, shit. And so and it's gone through phases where like there was weeks or months where I didn't put one out. But then yeah. like I was like, I got to get like a place and yeah. like. There's so many people out here that I'm interested in that I want to talk to. Fuck like, yeah, dude. Between like the barbecue guys, and that's like a whole lane that we're like. You talking about CM? No, I don't or know. Just, I, I just, just met Cade recently uh, cool at, a, at an event. So I work for uh, I work for two of the top five barbecue spots in the Texas shit. Monthly Top Fifty. Oh shit! And so uh, I work for uh, do work for Leroy and Lewis and Inter- okay. Interstellar Barbecue. So yeah, man. Those are my people. Uh, but yeah, I've had like Evan Leroy on. It's just cool to like talk to like I want to talk to anybody. You know, not necessarily comics, but like you know, music, comedy, fucking Everybody. entrepreneurs. It's like. You know, I don't I don't have like a fucking I don't know, like a format like some people do. It's long format. Anybody that's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like hey, dude. that's that's how that's how the, the godfather of pods does it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's like somebody who he's interested in. Yeah. Anybody. It could be anybody. And just people try to force shit too. They'll be like, Oh, this guy's like, you know, oh my Michael Gonzalez, he's the drummer of Kill Turn. Like, we better get him on because that he'd be a good guest. But like they might not be a musician or they're not actually interested in you, right? They're yeah. more interested in like who I can bring. Yeah, or just like, like, so tell us more about Tony. You know what I mean? Or what? Uh, and it's like, dude, you know, it's like, how much of that shit do you get from people, bro? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. Which I, is fine. I, I mean, love it. It comes with Tony. the territory it does. of it doing does. big shit. And people want to hear about it. Yeah, for sure. And it's not like it's a bad thing. Like, I, I'll I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you. And and Tony's, Tony's like, become a brother. Like, it's cool. Like that he, is cool. We have this he thing. He treats where, you guys good. Dude. That's absolutely awesome to hear. absolutely yeah. it's great I, I, seems like know. he does yeah he does and him and i him and i we have this thing where we where he comes and plays drums before every show 
So oh yeah, I've seen him do it actually. Once. I do. I, think. I, I was in there like early one time, yeah. or like oh, I was did peeking you? in the window one time. I saw him do it. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. when it was at Vulcan. Vulcan. When it was at Vulcan before you could. Yeah. Yeah. But he cut like it will. He'll have like five to ten minutes to just like I'll I'll just likes to jam out. Yeah, I'll put on a couple songs and he just fucking plays and I'll. He's he's genuinely good at the drums, man. Nice. Like, yeah. Fuck if yeah. he were to practice and do some shit, he could he could be post some drum videos, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> show us them chops. So yeah. show us those gospel chops. <laughs> you won't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, he he's cool and he lo- it, it's like a it's like a relaxing like get in the fucking zone yeah. for him before Here's something show. loud. Here's some like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, in the way that you guys do the music before the show, mm-hmm. there is some magic that happens there. Wow. Because like it loosens you up for comedy because like if you go into a comedy show dry i i don't know it's not necessarily worse or but it's just different yeah and like when like you sit down at the comedy show at like a kill tony and like yeah. you guys are jamming as people are kind of walking in or people walk or no people sit down first hopefully they're there yeah, already. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> most of the time they're there yeah, yeah or it's yeah. like half full and you guys start and it's just i've i've been fortunate enough to i caught a lot of the vulcan ones yeah and so yeah. uh because i was going to them before i moved here and it's just that's a whole nother part of the experience yeah like just and, and it loosens you up dude you don't yeah. have your phone so you're like you're listening to the music you're chatting the best you're part. chatting to the people next to you or like new people or like whoever you brought with you yeah and then like then then all of a sudden like oh yeah we're at a comedy show because like the hey we need you guys to be quiet or whatever you know what i mean don't heckle like that guy comes on like you guys will finish a song or no red band will come out and do yeah. do that little wah, wah, i was like gonna the, say does there some does, does i don't somebody know if they com- do that for kill no. tony actually no they no, don't no, they don't they we're don't. The, that's just the comedy shows yeah 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 i was like damn i don't i don't, I don't think, think they do, do that yeah that's just the comedy show yeah for sure yeah for sure but yeah uh red band comes on it's like this but and you're like oh yeah fuck we're like you kind of get lost and for, yeah you almost like forget that you're that what you're there for because mm-hmm. like the you're just kind of vibing on the energy and like the room and i feel like yeah. that music before comedy that was like the first time when i was going to those kill tony shows it was the first time i ever had wow. like a dope like music show before a comedy show yeah and I, I think there's some they got it figured out yeah y'all got it figured out because there's some there's some magic there it loosens people up and gets them ready to laugh that I, music's it's, fucking it's, awesome. it's that's that's the job at the beginning yeah it's it's to to make people feel comfortable hey you're at a show yeah you know you paid you paid good money to come so experience all this different types of art music Art, comedy, everything, everything, and then people have special skills too. So like they talk about that, mm-hmm. or they'll you know somebody can dance, and we'll start playing the interview dance. thing. Yeah. The, the interview, interview thing process is so so fucking so cool, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh fuck, I was just gonna say something. Um, but yeah, the uh, the music before the podcast is just so sick. Thanks, man. Yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. crushed, dude. It's so much fun to uh, just see people having fun and like the Im- the level of improv is so dope. You yeah, for I mean? for everybody on stage. It's 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 cool. And the thing is, you have to be locked in to the show. You have to it it, specifically when we're on here, we uh, jokes, any anything like we have the ability to react to that. Mm -hmm. He Tony doesn't tell me to do anything. Tony doesn't say like we just react like with the uh, with the William thing after he's after oh, yeah. screams. Like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Like we came up with that at Vulcan, like all of us. And it was like, and oh. then like the Hans Kim song. Yeah. Kind of dun, 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 things kind of evolve. You yeah. Know? And then like the, you, you guys kind of create theme songs for people. Mm-hmm. Right. Like David Lucas has one. Yeah. Right? Is, yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, bad boys. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 And then, uh, uh, Cam's song is, uh, what a hood, what yeah. a hood, what a hood. Yeah. That's so yeah. sick. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking cool, man. Everybody's got their, everybody's and you guys got never like learn those songs and rehearse those songs. It's just that hit. They'll like, we, yeah, we, most of the somebody stuff will we've, start playing it and you just ear it out quick. Nah, not really. Okay. Like we've, we've heard these songs before, you know, like I, I was, I was a huge bad boys fan. Like I remember watching bad boys one with, uh, uh, where fuck you know, I was in Brownsville I was still I was still in Brownsville at that time yeah uh Bad Boys 1 Bad Boys 2 so like all those all those songs like we've listened to them before and most of the stuff it's like hip hop shit you yeah. know you can we we've all played enough music to it's go a along it's with a it. live adaptation of a yeah yeah for beat. sure exactly yeah. exactly where the horns are the vocals and mm-hmm. the, yeah it's pretty sick yeah um I remember what I was going to say earlier cool. uh cool. The phone's being locked up. Yeah, it's the dude. best thing. It's the fucking best thing, dude. I'm saying, can we get that at some shows, some regular concerts? I'm saying, if 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 
if you were going to comedy shows a lot like we do yeah. and you and you are used to the vibe of locking the phones up that uh-huh. might be my favorite part for a while there yeah. i was just going to shows to lock my phone keep my phone out of my hands <laughs> so i fucking you know get off I mean? instagram and yeah. like oh, hold on i need a i need a break so and let me just cool. go you're like oh yeah i can like i'm living in the real world again but dude it's like and it's funny because uh, a couple metal bands like ghost you know who ghost is the guy that like dresses like the pope you've probably seen a picture of him maybe it's like a theatrical yeah. like slipknot kind of like maybe dresses like a I'm not into it, but okay. anyway, he posted a thing. I guess they were shooting like a music video or they were shoot they were doing something special and so they they put this like thing on that said, Hey, if you're coming to this show, we're gonna lock your phones up. Love it. And yeah. and dude, the metal community hates that. It's so weird. They yeah. they yeah, they were like, Fuck ghost and fuck that. You don't want us to have Like us fans? Up. Yeah. Oh it's shit. It's really weird. I don't know what but like all the comments were like like maybe one every twenty was like somebody like, Yeah, that's a good idea. Like people yeah. should pay attention to the show. Yeah. You know, and it's like and then the other was like an entitlement kind of like, We paid to be there, I should have my phone and then it was like the whole lane of like, What if an emergency happens? What if you know, like all that kind of yeah. and so but and I mean, yeah, that's I guess a valid concern. But what are you gonna call nine one one if a you know venues burn? You're gonna get out of there. I don't yeah. know. But I, I you just never know. That's, yeah. The the one thing I will say about music stuff is that if you're the comedy thing, people are working things out. Yeah. So they're not most of the time they're not done yet. If you see them working shit out, it so if somebody has yeah, to be done for the it, comedy for thing. sure. Yeah. And even when it is done, it's like, yo, I'm preparing for a special. Right. Like, I don't need you to be fucking putting this shit out. And maybe I want to take a risk and say some wild shit and see 100%. if people laugh at it. You know 100%. What I mean? like, so, like, you don't... And people people take things out of context, that, which is, I mean, the whole shit that happened with Tony. Yeah. Like, I all was, that context. Were, were you there? some crazy shit about that? I oh. wasn't living here yet. Okay. We, we were coming down to visit because Portland yeah. was still on lockdown. It was like one of the last places to unlock. Fuck. In, and in the middle of 2021? Really? Oh, yes. Holy it was, shit. It, yeah, yeah. And so nothing was really going down there. So we would just go, okay, well, we'll just pay 300 bucks and go to Austin. And we, yeah. we, we went one time right after the mass mandate was lifted, and we were here for St. Patrick's Day of 21. Oh, yeah, yeah And yeah. it was fucking cracking off. It was normal. Yeah. Normal mm-hmm. life. And we were like, dude- it's like, wild. I want to move here. I want to live here. And during uh, during that trip, we went to a Kill Tony at Anton. So I've been here for these weird yeah. moments. Yeah. So we went to a Kill Tony at Anton's where Donnell Rawlings was there and walked ah, off. That was right? such a fucking funny episode. And then, and then the next, so at that episode, <coughs> I was actually, um, like, I was new to going to Kill, Kill Tony and comedy okay. shows. I was drunk. I was excited. It was post COVID. It was during COVID. Mm-hmm. I was getting a little rowdy and I said, I'm rich bitch a couple times or something. And like somebody had to come over to me and was like, You got to be quiet. You oh, know what in I mean? the show. Yeah, in the show. I was, I was like heckling. You know what I mean? Yeah, new rookie move, rookie move. But after the show, it was still, I, the show was still growing in yeah. Austin. So Tony was still kind of hanging around. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And so I went over to him and I was like, Hey, man, I'm the guy that heckled and I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, it's all good or whatever. And, and you know, made a joke or something. And he was like, hey, if you guys are in town, you should come to this other show. He really undersold it. He was like, there might be some comics there. And we were like, OK. So we went to bought tickets to that show. And it was a secret show. And we, we bought tickets to it. We went to Vulcan. For Red Band. Red Band, Red Band secret, show. secret show. Yeah, fuck yeah. And that was our first secret show um, the next day. And so we were just, you know, going as much as we could while we were in town. So yeah. we went, and it fucking blew my mind. Dude. Yeah, man. Rogan came out. Ron White. Steve Byrne was there. Yeah. Like, it was so sick. And then and then at that night, uh, do you re- you probably don't remember. I don't know if you'll remember this because you have been at so many of these. But it was, uh, or you might have not. You weren't there because it was a secret show. Yeah. But there was this event. There was this moment where it was during, um, I don't know, Tony was making some, some Chinese jokes, you know, some okay. Asian jokes. And this guy stands up in the middle of the uh, crowd and like starts like like I'm gonna fight you kind like of thing. pissed off. Yeah, and Tony's just like wrecking this dude. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Making fun of him. And then uh, the secu- he started getting kind of aggressive, and so security ripped him out. Okay. And Tony was like, "That's what I call Chinese takeout." And oh, the whole dude. place erupted. Yeah. So I was, I heard about that. I was there for for Donnell Rawlings and that for Chinese takeout. And then months later, I come back and we're at Secret Show. And I'm here. I'm there for Pang Dang. What? How was I there for all those fucking? It's I, dude. Dude, that's bad fucking luck. Wild. Bad luck or good luck? I don't know. What you want to call that? That's fucking wild. But it was dude. really weird. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I'm. I don't know why. Why? I'm, like, we're here for Holy these. Holy. We are for the in, big moments, dude. Yeah. We were scared because Portland is so cancely. 
Uh, especially, yeah, especially in the metal, the like metal community, they cancel. Really? The, yeah, they want to cancel everybody. They're so cancely. Uh, and um, that's trash. It's so trash. But um, we were worried because you can see, you can see us in that video. Oh shit! Yeah, like it, you can see my buddies wearing like a cheetah skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah, yeah. like we were dressed ridiculous, and they were making fun of us and uh -huh. shit. It was honestly we were being distracting, and it was, <laughs> I would never do that again. But um, but yeah, we 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 were like fuck, like we're in this video that's going viral of him yeah. fucking you know getting that's canceled. Wild. And that's so, fucking wild, dude. Man. Yeah, and if we weren't even living here, it's just. I mean, it's. I don't know what the point of that story is, but it's just. No, it's but just you were, funny. It's crazy yeah. that we were here for these key. Donnell Rawlings getting pissed off walking out, which was so funny. We saw him later that night with these two girls were carrying him because he was so drunk. Shut and, up, and dude. Fuck, he, dude. He walked by us. That's and crazy. I good set bro him. No, you didn't. Yeah, he was like blacked out drunk. Yeah, were you but, drunk too? I mean, not. I was. You were just I having fun. I was just having fun, but I saw him and I was like, "Hey, Donnell, good set, bro." <laughs> Damn. Because dude, he got he he got yeah. pissed and left. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. goes, "I'm gonna go to the restroom." And never came. And never back. fucking came back. That guy owned him. I don't know. One of the golden he's a golden ticket, ticket guy. What's, yeah. What was that guy's name? Because I haven't ever seen that guy again. He was so funny. No, he's come. He's he's come a couple. Oh, times has he? Since, since What's his that name? One. I mean, you don't remember. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. remember his name. But either. he made a joke that night about because they were roasting at each other. Yeah, remember each other. it was getting uh -huh. heated. Yeah, and then he uh, he goes, "When'd you get those shoes? When Chappelle cut you a check?" Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and and he, like, it hit. Yeah, it hit he him got pretty hard. Mad. Yeah, it <gasps> hit him really hard. Dude. Donnell's a legend, though. I no, he that. is. He is, and he's I a fucking cool guy. dude, man. Yeah. yeah. I was at I was at the roast of uh, of uh, uh, Burt Kreischer when they they uh, oh, cool. Whitney. Put it on at the comedy store, dude. I just and saw Whitney last night pop out at the at, at the, the mothership. mothership. Really? Last she's night. here. Yeah, she was here last oh, night, fuck. and she fucking destroyed. Yeah, I love. Her I wonder so if much. she's gonna be on. I'm going to run show tonight. I wonder if she's probably. Dude, I love Whitney too. Yeah, she was on the first. Her and Bert were on the first episode at the mothership. South by oh, this, yeah. this year. Cool. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what were you going to say about the roast? I, I no, Don, Donnell was there. Okay. And that's the funniest shit I think I've ever been at because Donnell is not really like a, a roast. roasty guy. Yeah, yeah. So his his whole set was completely different and so fucking funny. He's dude. so funny, bro. So funny. People forget he was in the writer's room on fucking Chappelle's show, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, he, I mean, he's, he's just a, he's a cool dude, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was fucking awesome. That's dope. Really fucking cool. I love that guy. Yeah, um, he gets a lot of shit. How long though. have we been going, Harrison? Yeah, two fifteen. What? Two hours? <laughs> Damn, are we recording a Rogan podcast? What the Dude, fuck? I mean, they've all been long, bro. Good have they really? Good combos are good. Combos are good. I'm not gonna fucking stop it. That's good, man. But uh, I, I do want to hear uh, what you got. What you I do, got? For I me? do just want to hear one thing. We can wrap it up and and I don't and care. Chill man. You tell here, me what's up. I just wanted to hear, I guess, the story of how you got linked up with with the band. Like how with did Kill Tony? You, with the Kill Tony band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's all John, man. So John D's on the keys. John John has been the glue to all of this, actually. Really? So in 2020, uh, before everything opened up, Gary was doing a sling of shows at Antones. So it was the the first week of December. Uh, the Peterson brothers were on that show. Actually, they opened up that show. I was I was I was out of town. They were playing. They were playing that with Gary, opening up for Gary, but Rogan brought a couple comedians, a uh, couple of them being Tony and Red Band. They get there, they see the show. Everybody's hanging upstairs after the show in the green room, talking and shit. And Tony was talking to John. I was like, "Hey man, I got a podcast. I'm moving here. Um, my band isn't coming with me from California. Would you be interested in putting a band together for the for the podcast?" And he was like, "Yeah, cool." So a couple he said that to John D's. To John D's. Okay. This was all like I w I wasn't there. I was just in the green room. <clears throat> and a couple days later, on a this I I still remember I w I was in my apartment, uh, <laughs> taking a shit actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, you know, it's fucking now. Hey, it's twenty twenty. We call that handling business, bro. One, dude, that I'm is, taking a shit on my. You're scrolling. in the office, dude. One hundred percent. You were in the office, absolutely. Dude. And I scroll, I scroll, and I, I hit John D's story, and I was like, oh fuck, the fir the very first uh, poster, Kill Tony, Austin, Texas, j uh, January fourth, twenty twenty one. You already knew about Kill Tony, dude. Yeah, okay, I've, 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 I've been a fan of the podcast since twenty eighteen. Awesome. Theo's podcast, Chris, congratulations! Like all these, pot, like YMH, all these, I've I've been a comedy fan, yeah, for a long time. 
so I knew that they were like there was going to be a moment where the, some of these comedians were going to move here. I saw John put a story up, and I was like, "Bro, from the toilet, <laughs> bro, are you playing Kill Tony tomorrow?" It was su- it was literally the day before. Yeah, I was like, Tom- "Are you playing Kill Tony tomorrow?" He goes, "Yeah, man." And I texted him. I was like, "Bro, do you mind if I just fucking come and help you bring your Can shit?" I just hang. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll be your tech or whatever. I'll bring I'll help you bring in your shit. He goes, "Nah, bro, bring your percussion." Like come ha- come sit in with come hang with us, we not we're, we're not getting paid. We don't really know what the show's about. I knew what it was about, but just fucking come hang. And I was like, bet I'll see you at five. And I showed up the next day with my congas and an SPD and some cowbells and shit. Just some quick shit. Quick shit. And I was like, whoa, this is fucking awesome. We're doing it. We're doing it Kill Tony. Cr- it was so crazy. you were like hanging on stage, but you were also playing. I was you playing. Played. I was wow. in the band, but I wasn't the drummer yet. Okay. Did they so, have a drummer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm there and I'm playing, and I do the first uh, first two shows on percussion, and the third week the drummer wasn't able to make it. <clears throat> the drummer wasn't able to make it, so John texted me that day. He goes, "Hey man, you're on drums tonight. Great. Absolutely. Say less. I'll bring my stuff. Say less. And I remember getting there, and Tony shows up. <clears throat> Tony shows up for. Uh, Sound check, and we're getting all the shit going. He goes, "Oh fuck, the Mexicans on drums tonight." <laughs> it was like, it was like, yeah, this is perfect because Joel, Joel. Uh, oh yeah, Joel Jimenez. Is yeah, it, is that his name? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joelberg. Um, Joelberg. Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, they, the Mexican drum off thing was like a big thing beforehand. Right. And he goes, "Holy fuck, the Mexicans on drums tonight. This is perfect." Yeah. And it's just lining up. Dude. It was. It lined up. Why does stuff line up so weird? I don't know. Why does that happen? Like I that? don't know. And then the the bass player and the uh uh the bass player wasn't able to make it, so John called D Madness and Matt Muling to come, and that night went so well that Tony was like, "This is my band." Wow, yeah. that's so sick. Fucking crazy. So how many shows after that was the one I was at, the Donnell shows? Oh, uh, that show? must have been like two or three months. Two or three months. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because yeah. we started in January and we didn't move to Vulcan. Until June, until yeah. that happened. Yeah. So, so January fourth was the first one. We became the band on January eighteenth, two weeks later. And we were here during St. Patrick's Day. In March. Yeah. So it must have been in March, yeah. right? That one. And then a couple months later, Tony gets canceled for that shit. We take two weeks off, and Nick Franceschini at the Vulcan was like, "All right, you're gonna have it here at my spot now." And then for a year and a half, or June, June, the rest of. 2021 all of 2022 into march of 2023 those were sick days they were the, fun the, Vul- the vulcan the shows vulcan were, the was vulcan a, era the vulcan era yeah, of Kill Tony was how crazy so is that dude we've been we've been doing it for almost three full years and we've been at three different venues that's so sick the, the just, evolution has been crazy you know yeah never taking a step back on a venue either just like boom 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 now you guys are playing the heb arena dude how many people between nine and ten thousand it's like in the middle of 9,000. Two shows Two now, shows, right? back to back, 30th and 31st. So sick. I don't know if tickets are, I know that 31st is completely sold out. I don't know about the 30th. If it's not sold out already, there's only limited tickets left. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be insane, sick. man. That's going to be sick. Insane. Insane. Sick. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have a big setup for that one too. Like sick. a, like a big kit. Yeah. I want to have a fucking like John Bonham gong behind me. Like get I those clear, fucking... get those acrylics going. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's the thing, dude. Like, I, I, I love Gretsch drums, and mm-hmm. I only want to play Gretsch drums. Are you? Do now. you have an endorsement? I don't. Oh, come on, Gretsch drums. What the uh, fuck are you doing? I don't know. I, I've got friends who play Gretsch, and I've, uh, you know, they don't want to get canceled. No, it's no, not. I don't. Kidding. I don't even think it's that, dude. It's like we're, we, you know, we have eyes. Everything's playing. Like, yeah. we, it's, it's a cool show. You know, mm-hmm. I, I. They'll get with it. I hope so. They'll get with it. Get with I it. I hope so. Gretsch drums, wh- yeah. wherever you are. Yeah, I. You're, it, you're, you're, you're kidding yourself. <laughs> Endorse this man Yeah I would love it I would love it But I want to have My Gretsch kit My USA custom kit On that stage With symbols Like fucking a gong Behind me mm-hmm. It's Yeah Yes the yeah. gong Yeah dude you I was actually I know You're gonna get one I'm gonna figure it out You're gonna figure it out I don't you're know gonna how one? You're gonna rent yeah. one I don't know how But I want to be able To fucking turn around And go Boom Yes You know what I'm saying Wasn't there a gong before On the show It's Red Van's fucking oh, iPad Oh it's his little yeah. iPad thing Yeah And yeah. he hits it At the fucking perfect times He's so good at that stuff He is Yeah I mean dude They've been doing it For over 10 years they, like, they, they, they give they give They give our boy Red Van Your boy Red Van A lot of shit Dude Red Red Van he's, like, he's 
he's nice. I've, he's, I've heard. I've heard he's a nice guy. He's a very That's sweet all. human being. He's very thoughtful, man. Yeah. Very thoughtful. Heard from a lot of people that he's a nice guy. He's in, he's incredibly like all, everybody in that family, man. Everybody in the mothership has been. It's just it's just good. It's great. It's a magical. The place. vibe is insane. When we all hang out in Mitzi's after the show, it's beautiful. I always try to take people there and buy tickets, like if they're coming to visit, <coughs> just so I can just so they can kind of feel the magic. Yeah. And they go back home like, fuck, we don't have anything like that here. Nobody you know has I mean? anything yeah. like that. We're so lucky. It's, cool it's yeah. We're Chris here. Rogers and I, we we talk, we we have deep conversations after every show, and both of us go, dude, how like how the fuck did we get here? We're playing at the greatest comedy club in the fucking world. On the greatest live podcast, the only live podcast that matters. It's <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, right? But like, is there another one that anyone, I don't, I've never heard of one. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. But just just him and I going back and forth on like, yo, dude, this is this is absolutely wild. It's we try real. not to think about it too yeah, much. Yeah, you can't. It gets yeah. weird. It does. It yeah. does. It, it's weird mind games. But like, there's moments where him and I have really deep conversations about life and where we've been and how we've got here, and it's like, yo, man, we're we're right where we're supposed to be. And it all comes down to to good people. Wow. Trying to yeah. get trying to get good people around him. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. like building a good team and, yeah. just and Tony's, being homies. Tony's Tony's fucking running the shit, man, and, and he's so good at he's it. He's so good at it. <laughs> and but he's he makes sure we're all in check. We're all have yeah. a good attitude. Like he's like, Hey, you good? You good? You good? It's awesome. It's crazy to even watch the episodes from Antones and then mm-hmm. watch them now. It's so it's, different. It's so it's like you all got like so much more tight and better and like Yeah. It's crazy. We're a unit. Yeah. It's a unit. You're man. a band, like yeah, like the whole kill tone, like beyond not if even the one people that aren't playing instruments that are on that stage, yep. they're like part of the band. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's a we're we're a family. They man. think the band is part of the show, but really, it's like the show is part of the band. <laughs> I, don't no, I don't know about know. that. No, yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's y'all fucking are cohesive, dope. dude. Uh, we could probably wrap it up, but um, I appreciate you so much for coming on here, man, dude. Fucking and, thanks for having me. Yeah, bro. and I for would real. love to hang out again and yeah. fucking have you back and or just kick it, you know. Let's go kick to, it. Let's dude. go to. I want to go to some music shows and yeah, maybe some, I'll do a mic jams. with you. Yeah, do a mic with me and yeah. I'll, I'll come sing, bro. I've been singing. I want. Yeah, I want to sing some soul stuff Thir- on Thursday stage nights, bro. I've never done. I've. I need to kind of get my legs like singing stuff yeah uh, for sure that isn't screaming so i need to like try i need to go and try some do some it some mics or something but yeah absolutely run that outro bro run it